It's homecoming on the campus of California University of Pennsylvania as we join you from Hepner Bailey Field at Adamson Stadium where the California Vulcans look ready to take on the Clarion Golden Eagles. I'm Zach Lamar and joining me is Tyler Harris. Now Tyler looking to last week in crossover play in the PSAC. Both these teams suffered defeats. We'll start with California first. California just couldn't come up with that big win that they anticipated on having against a good Westchester team, losing that one 38-31. It was a tough matchup. California tried coming back, but just came up a little short in the end. And now we looked at Clarion. They went on the road against another tough opponent, East Stroudsburg. I know they had a big deficit at halftime, but they almost came back. They were down 35-7 to at halftime, Sack. Tried coming back, but ended up losing overall 48-28. to So 21 points in the second half, just not enough to overcome that East Stroudsburg team. Now when we look at these two opponents today, this will be the 84th meeting between Clarion and California. Absolutely, California has won the last eight and has won nine of the last ten rather, so California has control over this uh, meeting, Zach, and they look to keep that up uh, in this game coming up. Yeah, at home you hope to get a victory. Now we're going to look at some of the players to watch and for California, the player on offense we're going to look at had a big day through the air last week. Four receptions for 118 yards for Kawan Scott, and he looks to try to have a repeat performance with quarterback James Harris under, uh, under shotgun again. That's usually his favorite formation, so he's probably going to utilize that today again against Clarion. And now looking at defense for California, we have a defensive back we're going to look at, hopefully get some turnovers. C.J. Towns, he's been proving himself week after week, Zach. He's currently third on the team in tackles right now, and the quarterback for uh, Clarion, a little bit shaky on offense, has thrown more interceptions than he has touchdowns. So C.J. Towns is looking to step up and uh, maybe cause some more problems for him. And mentioning the quarterback for uh, Clarion, Ben Fiscus is not in there. He's out today with an injury out through the rest of the year. Darrell Carson is going to take his spot. Yeah, he's currently second on the team in rushing, Zach, and uh, four touchdowns on the team. He leads the team in rushing touchdowns, actually. So he's a dual threat. California really has to watch out for that. They struggled a little bit with the rushing, uh, rushing offense um, on last week's game against Westchester. So they're going to have to step up their rushing defense and try to find a stop to the rush. Yeah, facing Rondell White last week gave up 145 yards to him. Hopefully contain Carson. And we look at Clarion's defense. Cal's offensive line surrendered four sacks last week. They hope that a certain player for Clarion doesn't do the same. Julian House there is currently has four tackles, actually, I'm sorry, eight tackles for loss on the season, Zach. Uh, has a lot of sacks on the year, too. So if you're California offensive line, uh, if you're the California offensive line, rather, you got to find a way to maybe maintain that player in particular. Uh, that whole linebacking core for Clarion has really proved themselves all season, and so has that defense, uh, holding teams to a pretty decent amount of points, for the exception of last week, of course, against East Stroudsburg. But nonetheless, it's going to be pretty interesting to see how that offensive line reproves itself, and it's going to be against a tough defense. And when we come back for more homecoming action at Adamson Stadium, we'll have the kickoff next on CU TV. Do you want the latest scoop on California Vulcans football? Watch each week for highlights and analysis of last week's game preview of next week's game, and a look around the PSAC. Get pumped. Vulcan Football 2013, Tuesday through Friday, it's on CUTV. Watch CUTV online anytime, anywhere. Check out your favorite original programs, coverage of the biggest events on campus, and cheer on your Vulcan sports teams. CUTV, log on, tune in now. Visit cutv.calu.edu backslash live. CUTV is your home for local high school football action. Sundays at 8.30, Thursdays at 5.30, only on CUTV. There is a university built on an uncommon dedication to the whole student. 
where core values of integrity, civility, and responsibility are not just taught, but integrated into academic experience. Creating a learning environment for personal life as well as professional life. California University of Pennsylvania. Vulcan Football 2013 is brought to you by First Niagara, JD Waterproofing, UPMC Health Plan, Lee Supply Company, Trip Total Media, and that's all. Thank you for your support sponsors and Tyler. We welcome you back to Adamson Stadium. We're going to look at the tail of the tape now, brought to you by JD Waterproofing. Yeah, as you see, Clarion currently leads scoring overall and uh, per game average, 28 to 25. So not by much, but significantly enough. But the big difference is in passing. Honestly, Zach, uh, Clarion has the lead in rushing, but in passing, California has the lead as well. That's usually how the team has been in the past couple of years. Look at total offense there. Clarion leads at 368.2 yards per game. The turnover margin is a big difference, though. Uh, California is at negative two, Clarion being at a positive four, so there's a big difference there. And then you go to the time of possession, Clarion leads uh, above Cal, 29-42 to 27-33. So these two teams are fair, fairly close together, Zach. I mean, they have the same exact record, three and two overall, one and, uh, one, and one in the division. So they're currently looking to find each other's, you know, they're looking to see where they're going to be at. Once the uh, end of the season comes around, this is a good way for both of these teams to separate themselves, though. Absolutely, Tyler. And this game is ever more important as currently IUP is losing 28-3, to our last uh, uh, score check, to Slippery Rocks. So this plays an importance because IUP, if they lose, that would uh, leave Gannon as the only remaining undefeated team in the West. So this game has a lot of implications going later in the season. Now we take a look. The California players there are sporting their red homecoming special uniforms, Tyler. I know last year they were they fared pretty well in those. Yeah, last year they ended up winning Lock, against Lock Haven at their own homecoming again here at Hepner Bailey Field and uh, did a good job of it, controlled uh, Lock Haven, actually forced them to a shutout. So every time that they've worn that red jersey, though, they've won. Uh, they're currently undefeated in those red special jerseys. So uh, in my opinion, I guess maybe you could say they should wear those a little bit more often, maybe uh, cut those losses down in that L column. Yeah, Tyler, I'm a, I'm a superstitious guy myself. I would wear them until I lost to them, honestly. So, But the captain shot there, you see um, Noah Taylor, Mike Williams, Dewey McDonald, as well as number one. I can't remember who number one is, Tyler. Number one is the Fort Jeff Knox Jr., Zach, and uh, he was out last game against Westchester. He was in a walking boot. He's had some problems with his leg in the past couple of weeks, and now he's healthy enough to come back on offense, which... Uh, struggled a little bit rushing-wise against uh, Westchester. Derek Fiore having 39 yards on 16 carries. Nick Grissom having 39 yards on three carries. Uh, so Jeff Knox being absent in that rushing game uh, definitely helped California's offense suffer a little bit. Uh, but now with Jeff Knox, you might expect him to come back with a big game. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, Zach, the coin toss is over. Cal's going to kick off to Clarion to start the game, so they're going to receive the ball in the second half, which is pretty big. California, for the past couple of years, has been a comeback team, and they've showed it a little bit this season as well. They came back to Westchester last week, uh, being down by two possessions, and then coming back to being down by one, going for the onside kick, not converting it. But nonetheless, um, they've been a comeback team for a while, and I, I believe that's going to be why they really defer to the second half. And uh, if they find themselves down after the first half, they'll try to make a comeback and make this thing a little bit more interesting. Absolutely, Tyler. I always like getting second half kickoff. Uh, you can, if you have the ball last in the first half, you score there. You can also score first in the second half, in my opinion. That's the best way to go about it, but you can also start your comeback if you need to. And uh, this week, also to mention, Knox is listed as the number one running back on the depth chart, so he will be back. James Harris is still going to start for the Vulcans this week. He started last week against Westchester, did pretty well, 273 passing yards. Uh, so, some shakeup at the depth chart. Now we're going to look at the weather for the game today. Uh, 65 degrees, a pretty nice day, 12 mile an hour winds, 
No chance of rain. It looked like it was going to be a little cloudy earlier. It looks like those clouds have gone away. Absolutely. Uh, for the past week, Zach, I've been feeling a little under the weather, but now I'm uh, feeling a lot better now, and I'm really excited about this game, Zach. It should fare, should fare to be a good one. 12-mile-an-hour win, Zach, that might be a little bit uh, hard for California to grasp because they are an air uh, passing offense, obviously, uh, have struggled with the run over the past, so they rely on their yardage to come from the arm of the quarterback, whether it be Cody Schroeder earlier in the season, now James Harris, as California has decided to switch up their quarterback, uh, and as well as last-minute field goals. I mean, Cody Nuzzo uh, has done pretty well so far this season, only missing maybe one or two field goals. Uh, no extra points missed either, so that's always good. So uh, if a game does have to come down to a last-second field goal, uh, the win might be a little bit tricky for the Legatron, Cody Nuzzo, to put one in between the pipes. Yeah, his improvement this season, I know he missed an extra point in week four last season against IUP. I mean, they ended up coming back to win the game, but you don't want to miss extra points. Those seem like easy chip shots. His improvement this year has been big to the Vulcans. Now kickoff is away, and Cody Nuzzo kicks it away, and it will go through the end zone for a touchback. The ball will be out on the 25. We're going to look at the defensive starters for California now, Tyler. Absolutely. You see Brian Justice highlighted there. He's been a big impact player for this team. Corey Ford has stepped up after transferring from Townsend. C.J. Towns, our player to watch this week. Dewey McDonald's also uh, always a very big player to watch. He's that free-floating safety in that 3-3-5 on defense. Noah Taylor, Anthony McPoyle is a big boy. Uh, Paul Everson, always a good uh, player to watch as well. He can come up with big play. Branko Brusick, uh, our player to watch last week, Zach, did pretty well as well. So this defense is very good, ranked number three in the PSAC West. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how they fare against uh, Clarion's offense. The snap is away. It's going to be a draw play up the middle, met by a swarm of players that are on the 27. Bobby Thomas. Now we look at the Clarion offensive starters. Darrell Carson is the quarterback. We mentioned him in our open. Tyler replacing Ben Fiscus, who's out with the year for a leg injury. And Bobby Thomas, he has over 360 rushing yards on the season. California team that's had struggles stopping the run. Absolutely. So, I mean, you have that dual threat in uh, Darrell Carson, Zag, and you're going to try to find a way to stop him. I mean, that offensive line has proved fairly well for Clarion so far this year, opening up holes for their running options to go up. Second and seven from the 28-yard line. Another handoff off the middle, but the running back is tripped. Darrell Carson also goes down on the handoff as well, so looks like the running back, they'll actually say he lost some yards. They'll mark him down at the 24. So it's a four-yard loss in that play, third and 11. You look here, Carson it looks like actually kept the ball on that one. He just went down on the handoff. Yeah, Carson looked for the handoff. Might have been a fake handoff, but he got tripped up under his own feet, Zach, and he fell to his knees. So that's what caused the loss of yardage. It's going to be third and 11 now for the Eagles. Third and 11 from the 24. Carson had a shotgun. Three receivers. He's under a little bit of pressure. California trying to find him. He gets out of it, escapes the pocket, throws downfield, throws towards the sideline. A defender was there for California. He gets his hand up hard to tell exactly who that was. Let's see on the replay. But an incomplete pass. That will force the punt for Clarion. Yeah, it looks like that might have been number five on the coverage there, Dewey McDonald. He's uh, been a pretty big player. C.J. Towns also stepping up this year, uh, fitting better into that starting role, Zach. And now it's going to cause Clarion's first possession of the day to have to be forced to a punt. So um, that redshirt freshman and Darrell Carson, um, not a bad option at all, but he's trying to do what he can after stepping up after um, Ben Fisk is going down for the year. The punter for uh, Clarion is Nathan Conway. He is a senior, so some experience behind him. California rushes, almost blocks the punt. Trey Johnson is back to return, takes a bounce at the 40. Almost touches the Cal player. He'll be downed at the 38-yard line in California territory. So we look at the California offensive starters, Tyler. James Harris back in at quarterback. Absolutely. He's been the uh, solid option for the Vulcans uh, for the past three weeks now after replacing Schroeder midway through uh, one of the games in the past season. Jeff Knox back in the lineup. Trey Johnson's always a solid person to go to. Kawan Scott, our player to watch this week, uh, always that big deep threat. Uh, Mike Williams always there on a nice post route or a nice slant route. Uh, so a lot of options for James Harris. Start with three receivers. Sidecar knocks to his left. Harris is back to pass on the first play of the game. He is under a little bit of pressure. Pass is still completed, though, on the sidelines. We'll have to see exactly who that was on the catch. Looks like it was Trey Johnson on the reception. 
Desmond Green. We take a look at the defensive starters for the Clarion Golden Eagles, and there you see Julian Hauser, uh, the defensive end starter. Definitely one that you want to watch out for overall. He's a big player. He leads one of the defenses. He leads defensive tackles for loss, so you're going to want to watch for him and see how he does against his Cal offensive line. Now a handoff up the middle to Jeff Knox. He goes up the middle to about the 44-yard line, so that will bring up a third and three. They'll have to get to the 40, or excuse me, that's going to be a third and four. They'll have to get to the uh, 48 for a first down. And to correct myself on the first reception, Tyler, it was Desmond Green. Caught the ball for two yards, not Trey Johnson. Now Harris back under center. No huddle offense being utilized by the Vulcans. They have done that a lot this year. Twins left. Lone receiver to his right. Harris passes. And incomplete to Trey Johnson. The pass is a little bit behind him, not able to hold on. Looks like it would have been just enough for a first down, too. That pass was rifled from James Harris, Zach. A nice, straight, strong throw. Just a little bit behind the receiver. You'll take a look at the replay here. And uh, just a little bit behind him. Had both arms on the ball, just couldn't hold on to it. And that'll cause California to punt the ball away on their first offensive possession. Andrew Surrett is the punter for California. He has done a magnificent job this year, Tyler. He had a 79-yard uh, punt against IUP at IEP, that's one of the longest in Division II this year. So Surrett can always control the field position for the Vulcans. Punt is away, it is a long punt. Take a bounce, and it will go back the other way. So California, unfortunate to have that bounce. Marked at the 23-yard line. Nice punt from Surrett, just took a little bit of a backwards bounce, but uh, absolutely, Surrett has for, for sure stepped up his game all year, Zach. Uh, definitely a reliable punter. He can cough and corner the kick uh, pretty much on command. And if you look at when Clarion has the ball, Zach, like I like said on offense, 28.4 uh, points per game. Rushing, not, uh, doing pretty well overall with that dual threat in Carson and their running back as well. And then you got passing for Clarion. A uh, little bit opposite way of California. California, the more strong team in the passing uh, offense. Snap, handoff up the middle to the running back for Claren. He is met immediately at about the 26-yard line, a gain of three. Running back on that play was number 26, Bobby Thomas. Yeah, Bobby Thomas is a pretty decent running back, Zach. Uh, he's just having a little bit of trouble this year, finally getting started. We see a lot of running backs in the PSAC have that problem. For example, Lamont Smith in uh, last year. Uh, struggled a lot last year, only getting about 2.3 yards per rush. So you see running backs like that. Uh, struggle, but nonetheless, he's due for a breakout game. Now, two receivers to the right. It is going to be a pass from Carson. It is complete to the receiver. Immediately hit, but he shakes off the tackle. Looks like he did step out of bounds, though. That tackle is from number eight for California. That was Rodney Gillen. He'll be marked out at about the 32, one yard short of a first down. Enrico Canelio on the uh, reception. I believe it's going to be Canelo, actually, Zach, but nonetheless, he comes up with a good pass there, able to hold on to it and uh, get some yardage and bring up a third and short for the Clarion Golden Eagles. We'll have to see, might imagine to see a draw play here. Uh, two receivers, one on each side and then a tight end as well. Looks like a jumbo formation. Player in motion for Clarion. And it's a handoff up the middle. Bobby Thomas has it, finds some running room. Gets out to about the 36 yard line, a gain of four on the play and a new set of downs for the Golden Eagles. Yeah, as I was saying, uh, for the running back there, you know, Bobby Thomas, he he has struggled so far this year, not getting too, too many rushing yards. And I was saying how he has a breakout game in him, and it's, it should come soon. Uh, for California, you can only hope that your defense can hold them to not make that happen against them because uh, California has struggled holding the run, and that has proven itself over the past couple games. So California's got to step up and not allow that to happen. Carson stepping up to the line, trying to audible to play. Bobby Thomas switching sides. To the right is a sidecar. Looks like same formation, player in motion again. Carson back to pass. Goes down the field, has the receiver and is complete. Right at the first down marker at the 47 yard line. So it looks like it's to be a new set of downs for Clarion. Caleb Mancini on the reception on that one, able to find himself open as you take a look at Carson. Look to his right and throw. He has the receiver there, tightly covered by the defender uh, for California, but just not able to uh, Rodney Gian, uh, just not able to get close enough to break that one up. We've seen a couple of those uh, short flat routes already to the outside work for Clarion. We'll see if they continue to go to that. Carson back to pass again. Some pressure from the Cal line. It is a screen pass to Bobby Thomas. 
He is taken down at the 49-yard line. They'll mark him at the 50, actually, though. So a gain of three. You'll have to watch the pursuit, though, Tyler. The uh, Cal defense really doing a good job on that play. Absolutely. With the play that was drawn up, went to plan exactly, uh, only letting one player open. And uh, Thomas was able, the running back, rather, uh, yeah, Bobby Thomas was able to find himself open on that nice screen pass, and it worked to perfection for Clarion. Uh, you know, the linemen letting in who they wanted to let in and keeping out who they wanted to keep out. Clarion right at midfield, second and seven. Looks like we will have an offsides penalty against California as the running back, Bobby Thomas, breaks his way to the 46, a gain of four on the play, but Tyler, looks like there was some early movement from the Cal defensive line. Yeah, we'll see what the uh, referees come up with, and that's what it's going to be. They're going to give it the offside call. So that was a free play for Clarion, and if they, uh, it's always a good one every year on offense. You see the flag thrown, but the play not called dead because you know it's going to be a free play, and you have a chance to uh, make something bigger of it than just a five-yard penalty. So it kind of takes the monkey off your back for those short couple seconds that you have in that play. And it will make it second and two, so Clarion will accept the penalty instead of just taking the yardage they had. That would have brought up third down, but it's going to be second and two right at the 45-yard line. Need to get to the 43 for a new set of downs. Yeah, I agree with the call. I mean, you're not going to – you're, you're going to take the penalty. You're going to get that extra play in you, you know. Unless you get the first down, you're going to take that, you're going to take that penalty all day. Carson with a few receivers all near the line. He goes to the outside again, and that route just keeps on working against California today. That was number 32 on the coverage for California. Cannot exactly find him on my roster though, Tyler. You'll have to tell us who that is. John Reed was on the reception. Number 32 on Cal's roster was Tyrone Taylor, a defensive back who's been working his way up the system, Zach, and showed why they're a nice form tackle. But Clarion had a lot of receivers open on that play, Zach. California's gonna have to find a way to uh, pull off some better pass coverage because you don't want Clarion or uh, any of the quarterback to find any open areas for it to throw up. Now a run, met at the line is Thomas by Darnell Harding. Gains about one yard on the play, bring up second and nine. Darnell Harding, we not called his name a lot on the year. Makes a nice play on that play. Absolutely, good defensive stand there after that first down catch. Uh, Darnell Harding has really, really changed his game though, Zach. It's a name last year that we called a lot uh, in football and we said, you know, this is a great player. He has a chance to go pro and he's just been dinged up pretty much all last season, well, most of last season and all this season, too, he's been really dinged up. So his performance has kind of slammed off, slanted off, but it, he looks to pick it back up. Carson, another handoff to Bobby. Oh, no, Carson keeps it. He is met for a one-yard loss at the original line of scrimmage by a group of California players led by Darnell Harding and B.J. Stevens. B.J. Stevens coming up big on that one. Zach, the whole California rush defense read that play to a T especially number 25 there, C.J. Towns, able to read that one, Harding reading that one. Uh, just a great overall play from the Vulcans. Uh, they're aware that this quarterback is good at keeping the ball and getting some positive yardage on the run, but uh, California not fooled on that one. Yeah, if you can contain Carson today, he's such a dual threat. You see a lot of those quarterbacks now. He might have a good chance of victory here today. Bobby Thomas had to contain him as well. Looks like some pressure from the California defensive line. Rushing Carson out of the pocket. Passes out of the sidelines to the uh, the Clarion bench. Passing complete. And I'm sure this is a little bit too far for a field goal. We might see a uh, pooch punt here. Yeah, they might even take the delay of game, Zach, and maybe try to back up five extra yards to get some more uh, more yardage for their favor. And I expect this might be what happened, but uh, we'll have to find out and see what they do. It looks like the punt team is on the field for Clarion. As number 17, the punter, Nathan Conway, steps out. Uh, for Clarion, so looks like they're going to do that, but I wouldn't be surprised, like I said, Zach. Play clock's at nine. doesn't look like they're hurrying anything. They're just going to take the delay of game penalty, move back five yards, and have five extra yards to work with on the punt. Absolutely, Tyler. Yeah, excuse me, I had to step away. I had a sneeze there a little bit. Uh, maybe some allergies affecting me today, but uh, Conway did take the delay of game. It will back them up to about the 46-yard line now, Tyler. And Trey Johnson, he's an electrifying punt returner, but you have to imagine he won't even touch this one. He'll just let it bounce and see if he can go to the end zone. Yeah, it depends on how short, you know, far short it is. It could be a short punt, and uh, they might come up and try to fair catch it around the 20, 25 yard line. We'll have to see how this one pans out, though. And now, snap is away. Conway has it. 
punts the ball away. Trey Johnson will catch it at about the 13 yard line. So Conway able to pin California deep. No touchback on the play. California's gonna have to drive 87 yards if they want to score in this one. Yeah, they're definitely having in them, Zach. We've seen it last week against Westchester. James Harris and company putting on a lot of good drives. And when you see when, what happens when California has the ball, Zach, they have 25 scores. Uh, they average 25 points per game, rather. Rushing yards is averaging around 77 yards per game. And their passing, like I said, is really is what really has helped their offense overall, averaging around 240 yards per game. Uh, James Harris makes a look that number makes a look that number go up, though, uh, maybe closer to 300 yards per game. That's I guess that would be ideal for a quarterback who just steps in. Harris has three receivers. Twins left, lone receiver to the right. It is a handoff, and then a reverse to Trey Johnson. He has some open running room at the 20. He keeps going, 30. He's at the 40, one man to beat. He will beat him. He's on the sideline, he keeps going. Taking out of bounds around the 25 yard line. A big play right there by Air Trey Johnson. Absolutely, a great time to call the reverse. Clary not expecting it. California really hasn't run that play all year, Zach, and uh, it's proved to be pretty successful on this play in particular. Uh, Trey Johnson has got a lot of speed, and he showed why right there. Uh, even you saw the quarterback, James Harris, go up to take a block, and uh, that's something a quarterback's not usually willing to do, but he did it. That was a rush of 61 yards, Tyler. That might be one of the longest rushes of the year. Handoff to Knox now up the middle. He will get to about the 24 yard line for a gain of two. Bring up second and eight from the 24 of the drive. Or excuse me, that's uh, set a down start at the 26 after the long game. On that one on that one rush alone, Zach, going back to Trey Johnson's run, they might have pretty much equaled their average rushing yards per game, Zach. Uh, I mean, that was a long 60 yard run and uh, that definitely helps your rushing offense improve. Absolutely, Tyler. Cal's offense was averaging 77.4 rushing yards a game coming into this one. Now Derek Fiore in the run. He will get back to the line of scrimmage. Nowhere to go on that one. We'll have to see if we see the uh, unsung hero, Nick Grissom, come in. He's done a great job of running outside. You look at the replay. Fiore not able to find a hole. He's met immediately. Yeah, he kind of just ran into his own blocks there, not trying to break outside, trying to use that f brute force that he has to his advantage. It's not working out for him overall on that one. That's going to bring up a third and eight. That was Julian Hauser on the tackle. We mentioned him in the open. Not a tackle for loss, but a tackle right at the line. Harris back to pass, has a receiver. That is Mike Williams caught at the 18-yard line, a gain of six on the play. That will not be enough for a first down. We have to see if they're going to go for it or bring out Cody Newsom for the field goal. Well, like I said in the open, Zach, uh, a little bit at least earlier in the broadcast, the weather, as 12 mile an hour winds are definitely going to hurt the kicker's chances, but the offense is going to stay out on the field for this fourth and short. Fourth and short, Harris under center, two receivers, fullback, and Jeff Knox in the backfield. Fake handoff. Has a receiver, it is caught at the 15 yard line. Keeps going. We'll have to look who that was. That was number 41 for California. You have to tell us who that was, Tyler. Ryan McCauley on the reception there, a fourth string running back. A beautiful play, though, by McCauley as you see him catch the ball here. And he has great awareness of where he needs to be. Breaks one tackle, tries to break the other one. Almost successful in doing so, but he gets the necessary yards for the first down. It'll be first and 10 from the 13 yard line. Need 13 for a score. Need to get to the three for a new set of downs. So California doesn't have to work all the way in. Hand off up the middle. Nick Grissom has it. He is at the end zone right at the one yard line. He has met. We see Nick Grissom come in on that one, Tyler, and we see what he can do. 12 yards on one play. Absolutely. Nick Grissom has been that unsung hero for the Vulcans. Not getting a whole lot of time, but when he does, he certainly makes an impact. As you take a look at the replay there, using his speed and force, brute strength to his advantage as he gets up to the one yard line. Four California running backs have been utilized in this game so far, Zach. And Trey Johnson as a slot back has been utilized as a running back as well. So, so uh, five different players for California getting some rushing chances. You see the Fort Knox in there. Well, I see the, they do give it to the Fort. He is not in though. Met right at the goal line, just inches short. It will bring up second and goal. You'll see number 44 on the left side of your screen on this replay. Zach, come in and break this up. Mike Dietrich on the play. 
does a good job of coming up on the penetration, penetrating the line very well and stopping that run from happening. But you see Jeff Knox on the goal line, and this is a familiar look for the Vulcans as Jeff Knox was that big third down back, uh, fourth, fourth and short back or goal line back, and now he's fitting back into that role now. Fort up the middle, and he is in for the touchdown. California gets on the board first, or first, excuse me, I was getting a little bit early right there. The Fort goes in for the first score of the game for California. A short run, we saw this a lot last year, Tyler. The scouting away at Clarion's defense as his head reaches that goal line. The ball does too as well, the referee decided. So that'll put up six points on the board for California. Possibly one more, depending on Cody Nuzo's leg. But uh, it's definitely very important for the Vulcans to strike first in this game, and they have. This is the first time in uh, about three weeks they've been on the board first. And Cody Nuzo's point after is up. And it is good. So when we come back, we'll have more first quarter action. 344 left in the first. California leads 7 0. Need to know what's happening in your area? CU TV News Center brings you your best local news. Events on and around campus. Local weather. Vulcan sports coverage. CU TV News Center, live Thursdays at 5. You are watching CUTV, California University Television. And welcome back to California against Clarion, California with an early 7-0 lead on your first Niagara scoreboard. 344 left in the first quarter. You see some of the band. It is homecoming, Tyler. A lot of those band uh, might be some alumnus also win there as well as Cody News is about to kick it off. Absolutely. It's a great, you know, weekend to see a lot of the alumni come back and see their school and how they're doing, especially in a good football game like this one. This one early in the year might have looked like that it wasn't of much importance, but Clarion has really proved themselves this season, Zach, stepping up through the rankings and playing good football. So this game got a lot more important. Cody News's kickoff going to be taken right at the goal line. He's going to take it out, though. That is a returner for Clarion. He has met at about the 23 yard line and that's how we're going to look at some of the game notes for clarion and they returned 19 starters from last year that probably has to be a reason for some of their success although they did lose one in ben fiscus uh, they're 10th in the league in both scoring and points allowed not great numbers there and this is their second straight road game they had four home games to start the season that definitely helps your success as well zach four home games to start the season that gives you that gives you a lot of comfort uh, knowing that you're going to be home, uh, get that 12th man involved in the fans of Clarion. Uh, and they've built quite the student section over this past year. So um, definitely an interesting football team this year. Bobby Thomas with the handoff to the outside. Gets to the line of scrimmage and then out to about the 29-yard line. So it'll be a gain of five on the play. Bring up about second and five on the play, or in the next play. Absolutely. You see the handoff there. Just a simple... Uh, Halfback draw to the left side and gets up to the line of scrimmage and gets a couple of yards there. Able to break through some California defenders, but he gets forced out of bounds. And uh, actually, he gets stopped short of being out of bounds as the clock continues now. 3.09 left in the first quarter. And Tyler, at the end of the quarter, since it is homecoming, we had a lot of festivities. We'll continue that in a second as the next play. Bobby Thomas to drop the middle. Gets to about the 31 yard line again at three, bring up third and three. Back to what I was saying, Tyler, you had an opportunity to interview Joe Vitale of the Pittsburgh Penguins on Monday night for the homecoming hockey series. We're gonna air that interview between the first and second quarter. So viewers at home, you're gonna wanna stay tuned and see the exciting uh, questions that Vitale was able to answer from Tyler. Absolutely, Vitaly's a great guy. I mean, I also had a chance to interview Rob Bertuzzo as well. So both of those guys being drafted by the Penguins, going to the AHL, AHL, now working their way up to the NHL. So uh, definitely a great interview from both of those people. Now pass from Claren is complete. It is going to be a first down at the 39-yard line, a gain of eight on the play. 
looks like number 23 on the reception, Tyler. I believe it's actually going to be number 83, Zach, and that is Matt Lehman, a former Burl alumni. Uh, so I have a little bit of alumni from back in my old high school here, now playing for Clarion, currently sitting as a second string receiver. But uh, it's always nice to see some of your uh, friends and alumni playing for separate teams here in the PSAC and get to cover them in a game. Yeah, he is a redshirt freshman this year, so getting some experience now this year. Carson with the pass. Bobby Thomas with the completion met, uh, or excuse me, that is not Bobby Thomas. That is number 22. Chris Liberto, he is met immediately for a few yard gain right at the 42. Absolutely nice fake, but uh, California not fooled whatsoever. As looks like number 22, as you said, will be brought down on that one, Chris Liberto. So uh, California playing a very good defense, Zach, so far in this game, not allowing a whole lot of yardage and forcing Clarion to punt on both of their previous two uh, possessions. Of and I have shotgun, three receivers and two sidecars. It's going to be a handoff to Thomas up the middle. He is met right at the line of scrimmage, though, so no gain on the play. It'll bring up third and seven from the 42. And Tyler, like you said, seeing some of your uh, former players or maybe rivals from other schools in the PSAC, there's actually one on California. I'm from Georgia, some of you might know. Etowah High School graduate James Harris is the quarterback for California. I got the chance to see um, his numbers a little bit while I was in high school, and he did a pretty good job before going to Wake Forest to play some baseball as well. Absolutely, a five-star recruit in high school in football, Zach, and he's proven why for California now. He just decided that baseball wasn't his thing, came back to play some football, and has had some pretty good success so far. Third and seven from the 42. Carson under a little bit of pressure. The pass is incomplete. Terrell Roberson with a big hit. It would not have been good enough for a first down. Nonetheless, bring up fourth and seven. And the punt team on yet again for Clarion. Caleb Mancini, the intended receiver on that play, just not able to come down with it. As you see there, uh, Terrell Roberson comes in and makes a great defensive stop there and doesn't allow Clarion to get the first down. And that's going to cause the third punt for Clarion of the day with 31 seconds left in the first quarter. The last punt for Clarion Conway kicked it 34 yards. Fair caught at the 13-yard uh, line for California. Trey Johnson back to return. Uh, this time Conway a little bit more room to work with, so we'll see if he can pin him a little bit deeper. The punt is away. It is a deep punt. Johnson will field it about the 8-yard line. He'll start to return it. Breaks it off at the 20. And they're going to mark him down and say he actually took a knee when he uh, caught the ball, Tyler, so a little bit of a uh, close call there. Trey Johnson not able to break off a big return. Nonetheless, we're gonna look at some California game notes now. We looked at Clarion's before. We're gonna look at the Vulcans now. And it looks like they're just gonna reposition the ball, Zach. Uh, as you said on the play, Trey Johnson's knee went down and touched at the nine yard line. But you look at those game notes that you were speaking of. California has won last of their eight, the last eight of their homecoming games last year being Lock Haven. This is their fourth block. They have four blocked field goals of the uh, last week against Westchester. And Tyrell Roberson tied the school record for the kickoff return of 100 yards. And that pass incomplete to Trey Johnson. Harris and Johnson not able to connect so far in this game. There's been a couple um, too much further passes or too short passes. Johnson had the big run play, but Harris needs to get a little bit of a rapport with his receivers going. Absolutely. I mean, this, this offense was made for Cody Schroeder earlier in the year, Zach, so you have a backup coming in and trying to make something happen. You kind of have to go as you know week by week to try to get the offense more suitable for you and your uh, quarterback skills. Empty backfield on this set. Five receivers. Harris with the pass. It is complete to Trey Johnson. Well, Tyler, he probably heard me on that one and made a big play right there, right around the 36-yard line. Absolutely. Number 41 on the coverage there is Corey McNamara, a pretty noticeable defensive back. Definitely leads a lot of categories for Clarion's offense, defense. rather. And Trey Johnson able to separate himself from McNamara and come up with a big reception for the first down. And it looks like that might be the last play of the first quarter as time is winding down. We have one second left, and that is the end of the first quarter, Tyler. But like we said before, keep it here. We have the Joe Vitale interview coming up, Tyler. You had a uh, big opportunity as we're going to look at the scoreboard first. Ladies and gentlemen, if you could direct your As uh, it's an early 7 nothing lead for California on your UPMC health plan scoreboard as we go into the second. Now we're going to look at the Vitale interview, Tyler, that you had a chance to uh, undergo on Monday night. 
Here with Joe Vitale, forward for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Now, Joe, uh, I just wanted to ask you about your experience playing at the uh, Northeastern University. Uh, Northeastern was a fun experience. Um, you know, coming out of junior and you know, getting the opportunity to play in Boston and Hockey's Conference was obviously a thrill to um, play on a great Cronin. Um, so my four years there were great. I uh, met my wife there in freshman year, so I had a lot of great, great memories from that school, and it kind of set me up to play here in Pittsburgh. So it was a great, 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 great time. Absolutely. You were drafted back in 05 by the Pens, and you've worked your way up from the minor leagues in AHL. Now you're working as a uh, NHL player. How is that? It's been great. You know, it was quite a struggle for, for a long time, obviously being, you know, Wilkes-Barre for a few years, and even coming up here, you know, being scratched every now and then and finding your way. Um, but, you know, the struggle's been great and had great people and great support, great family through it. Um, but uh, obviously to play here in Pittsburgh is such a great sports city, and to play and you know, be a Penguin is obviously an honor, and I take a lot of pride in that, so it's been fun. Absolutely, it's a great hockey, uh, great hockey city right now, and you know it's getting more and more popular, especially with events like this. How do you feel about this kind of an event? It's awesome. Obviously, uh, when they asked me to um, to come out here, I always jump on the opportunity. I love meeting the fans, you know, especially the kids. You know, they've seen their excitement, in their faces, and uh, obviously, it wasn't long ago, we've, you know, when I was you know that age and everything. So uh, to see their you know smiling faces and their excitement, in their faces kind of makes makes it all worth it for sure. Good start, good start to the season so far, two and zero. How do you expect to go from here? You know, I think we're just going to keep building, obviously, and um, you know, hope for hope for more wins and great things. Uh, I think we, uh, with a few new, few new faces in the room, um, I think we obviously have some work to do, and as far as systems uh, systems go, so I think to keep building on that and kind of getting guys familiar with the systems and uh, kind of the way things are done, and uh, with that, you know, being more familiarized, I think guys will start feeling more comfortable and kind of finding their groove and and playing at the, their max and peak level. So I'm excited where we're going. I'm excited about the group we have, and. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, game three tomorrow. Absolutely. And uh, real quick, uh, you have people now wearing your jersey, wearing your num their num your number on their back with your last name on their back. How does that feel? Uh, you know, it's surreal. You know, obviously you drive down the street for a game and you see something like that. It's uh, Sometimes you do have to pinch yourself. And, um, you know, obviously I think we take a lot for granted, especially when you're here a long time. But, um, you know, to remind yourself that it's an incredible thing and it's a cool thing. Um, is important and not only that but just appreciate the fans who are willing to spend the money for jerseys and shirts and, and just show your you know support so uh, I always reach out try to reach out to those people and thank them um, but uh, obviously it's a it's a cool thing absolutely thank you very much Joe we appreciate you being here Thanks, I appreciate it. yep and we welcome you back from the interview a couple plays we missed Ryan McCauley with a four-yard reception on first down then a uh, false start penalty against the Vulcans drove them back five yards, second and 11. And now California takes a timeout. But Tyler, I know you had a lot of fun doing that Monday night. You got to interview both Vitali and Bartuzzo. Absolutely. Those two gentlemen were very, very nice. Uh, good interviews, definitely, overall. Uh, I mean, it's a great opportunity, especially for us here at Cal. You, uh, I, I, just, I just don't feel like uh, you could really find that great opportunity anywhere else. And uh, I mean, thank you, Gary Smith, for helping us out. Overall, I mean, I mean, he definitely definitely gives us a lot of great opportunities, and two of two of them right there. Overall, just a great experience, a great week overall here for homecoming week. Harris back to pass, second and eleven. Pass is completed to Mike Williams, out to the 44-yard line, two yards short of the first down. So bring up third and two. And uh, Tyler, while we went to. Well, not break, really, but the interview, I got a chance to look up the uh, Slippery Rock IUP score. Slippery Rock is currently winning 42-3 to against IUP. Yeah, that's a pretty outstanding uh, number there, Zach. But um, California really struggled against IUP, and Slippery Rock taking care of them handily. Um, so that might make that Slippery Rock game a much, much harder for California. Definitely Slippery Rock gaining a lot of momentum after that one. And now we have a couple flags on a play. We'll have to see what the call is for. The referees might huddle, but we're going to get the call now. And it looks like illegal, illegal substitution on Clarion. So that will give the Vulcans an automatic first down now at the 49-yard uh, line. Uh, big break for California, unlucky for Clarion. Absolutely, California was faced with a three, third and three, uh, but now that gives them a new set of downs, and I mean, that just takes a monkey off your back and kind of regroup a little bit on offense, and James Harris is going to look to do something here. Harris back to pass. He has the deep ball, Mike Williams, 
it is caught at the five. Touchdown, Mike Williams. James Harris gets the bomb from 51 yards deep, and the Falcons extend their lead 13 0, pending the extra point. As I say, James Harris is looking to do something here. He does, Jack. Uh, beautiful over the shoulder grab for Mike Williams. We'll take a look at the replay and break this down for you. Great job by the left tackle there, really pushing out that defensive end, not allowing them to get to Harris. And Harris, I mean, Williams has him by two steps, catches the ball in stride, takes it to the house, uh, you know, books his hotel room, has reservations for six, looks great overall. Now Cody Nuzo on for the extra point attempt. It is up, it is good. So when we come back, the Vulcans now have a 14-0 lead here in the second quarter. High School Roundup, bringing you the best coverage of high school football in Western Pennsylvania. Tune in for scores, highlights, analysis, and the best plays from the previous week, plus previews and predictions of the week's biggest games, standings from across the region, and news from around the state. High School Roundup. Catch it. Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays on CUTV. You're watching CUTV, California University Television. And we are back. As you can hear, the banging of the, uh, I guess you could call that steel back there, by a band member in the Vulcan Blaze, the mascot for the Vulcans. As the kickoff is taken about the five-yard line by Clarion, able to be returned, taken down at the 28-yard line, so a Return of 23, and Tyler, we're going to look at the touchdown to Mike Williams right now. Absolutely. Like I said, uh, a good job by the offensive lineman there, number 73, Chris George, the left tackle in that play, making sure the defensive end can't get to Harris. And I mean, great job by Williams, too, not losing that ball in the sky. Nice little over-the-shoulder in-stride grab. And, uh, I mean, he had two steps on the defensive back as well, so there was nothing stopping him from getting from the 10-yard line to the end zone. Um, just overall a great pass. Now Harris is getting more comfortable under center, syncing up with his receivers better. And uh, he's got quite an arm, Zach. His deep ball is very phenomenal. And uh, that's going to help that passing offensive stat go way up through the ceiling. Now a handoff up on the outside. Player for Clarion has some running room. And that is number, I believe, 39 for Clarion, maybe 33. I believe it's 39, Tyler. Johnny Martin. On the carry, on the, uh, yeah, on the carry rather. Thought it might have been a pass, but definitely a carry. Nice job getting through that little tight gap there on the offensive line. And CJ Towns is the one to bring him down on the play. So good job by Towns uh, being that last person there to possibly stop him before he gets to the end zone. Uh, but just his, his stature is very small, Zach. He was able to fit through that little gap very well. That was a 21 yard gain for the Eagles. As you see Martin again with the handoff. This time he has met though for about a two yard gain. So he'll bring up second and eight. California ready for him that time. Absolutely, Bobby Thomas not out there right now. Uh, not sure exactly as to why, but nonetheless Martin making the most of his chances right now in the backfield. Uh, a very solid carry on his first carry of the game and that one just going up the middle, trying to find a gap, but California closes it down as there is an injury on the field right now, not sure exactly who it is. It looks like it's going to be an offensive lineman. But, Zach, let's go ahead and look at the uh, PSAC West standings. And uh, as we said, this game is definitely very interesting overall, and you're going to see why as to why right now. Yeah, California and Clarion obviously playing today. The winner will move to 2-1, and 4-2 and two overall. The loser going to 1-2 and two and a 500 record. The one game, like we mentioned before, the Slippery Rock beating IUP. 42 to three. So Slippery Rock will really technically be in second place. IUP will drop all the way to third. 
because Gannon had a victory 55 to 14 over Edinburgh today. Gannon is undefeated this year in the West. They are four and two overall. Right now, they're the cream of the crop in the West. Absolutely, you have those two losses overall, but you win when it matters the most, and that's in the conference. So Gannon now sitting atop of the PSAC West. Last year, they were towards the bottom. Fake handoff, Carson with the pass to the outside. The uh, Cal defender, though, meets him immediately at the 49-yard line, just short of midfield. That was number 29. I believe that's Aaron Terry. Number 10 for the uh, Clarion Eagles there, and on the catch there is Enrico Canalo. Uh, so great job. A little bit thrown above him, a little bit thrown ahead of him, rather, and able to get his hands up and put his hands on that one and come down with it uh, and keep his feet inbounds as well. So that will bring up a third and five for Clarion. And, if you're California, you've been doing very well stopping that third down conversion. Uh, they're going to look to do the same thing again. Clarion today, two for five so far on third down conversions. See if they can make it. The ball is fumbled. It looks like a Vulcan recovery. No, it's still on the ground. It is a Vulcan recovery. Darnell Harding, the senior linebacker with the fumble recovery. Absolutely. We said Darnell has been banged up all year, and his performance has declined due to that reason. But now getting a uh, turnover in his column, getting a fumble recovery, and that's going to help his stat book there and maybe uh, put one up there on the resume tape if he has one, Zach. And that's a great play by Harding, good awareness, knowing where the ball's at and uh, coming on, coming up with it overall, not, allow, not allowing Clarion to jump back on that one, give, off the, give the California offense good field position. Uh, and now Harris is going to look to strike again. Harris back out there, two receivers. And one tight end, or actually two tight ends on the play, and Fiore in the backfield. There's a handoff to Fiore. He gets outside, has some running room at the 40, still up at the 35. There is a flag on the play, though, taken out at the 34. There's a flag on the play, though, Tyler. Looks like it might be holding against California. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what the referees come up with here, but I, I'm guessing that's what it's going to be. Uh, I believe I saw a nice hold, hold uh, on the left side of the screen from a Vulcan player. So uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at the replay, Zach. You'll see the snap, and you'll see the handoff. And as soon as he makes the cup upfield, yep, there you see it right there on your right side of your screen. And there's another one right there, too, uh, on number seven for Clarion. So uh, a couple different holds on that one. But nonetheless, good job by Fiore breaking out to the right side and finding some open running room. But holds will um, not allow that play to go in the record books. And uh, it's going to be a kind of a of a failed play for California. It's first and 11 from the 45. It was a spot foul, Tyler. So California not losing as many yards as they thought they would. And now we have a flag. I believe this one might be encroachment as the offensive lineman was, uh, wow, what's the word? Or right, we'll see the call here. And it is encroachment against Clarion. So they give some of those yards right back. A hard count by Harris. The center, Jack Abercrombie, is flinched, but he was kind of lured into that by the Clarion D-line. Absolutely, it looks like Andrew Fraggle on the uh, guilty party on that one. Trying to time up the snap, but just not able to correctly. James Harris back under center. A full line, two receivers, and then Fiore in the backfield. Harris back to throw though. Pass is just short. Kawan Scott was the intended receiver. We've not called his name at all today so far. We touched on him in the open, Tyler. Uh, we've not been able to call his name, though. No reception so far. Yeah, Harris was able to sync up with uh, Kawan Scott really well last week against Westchester. Like we said, four receptions for 118 yards last week. None yet this week. That was his actually first go-to of the game. So uh, Harris is going to try to look to sync up with him eventually here with 10.41 left. Harris and Pistol. It's a handoff to Grissom. He gains a few yards. They're actually going to mark him for a two-yard gain to the 38. That will bring up a third and four. They need to get to the 34 for a new set of downs. So far, California 0 for 2 on third down conversions. Yeah, they are 0 for 2. Clarion doing a good job stopping them on the third down. But nonetheless, I want to touch on Nick Grissom real quick, uh, Zach. Every time, from what I can recall, every time Nick Grissom has touched that ball, he has not lost a yard. So uh, definitely a very good running back for California, sitting third in the depth chart. Like I said, though, he makes his impact when, he's gets, when his number is called. Harris back to pass. Goes, and the pass, Kawan Scott. He had it right in the nest of his chest. Uh, kind of an unfaulty rhyme there, but he drops it. 
as he goes to his knees, he'll bring up fourth down for the Vulcans. I'm, I'm wondering as to why he let go of that ball, Zach, because the ball was thrown right in the bread basket, but Kawan Scott was just, just wasn't able to hold on to it, hit him right in the numbers and everything. Yeah, he had to go down to his knees for it, but still uh, definitely thought he could have came up with that one. He's definitely frustrated with himself on the sideline right now, but uh, Harris is going to have to make something happen on fourth and four. Cal is going for it. Harris back to pass under a little bit of pressure. Pass incomplete. C.J. Goodwin was the intended receiver, so... And as they turn over downs, there's a flag on the play though, Tyler. Looks like might be roughing the quarterback. The Cal offense is coming off the field though. Looks like the flag might be waved off, Zach. It's going to be holding, but it's going to be a decline play. So that's going to bring up first down for the uh, Golden Eagles. Every time that Harris has been pressured in that pocket though, Zach, uh, he's not able to throw very well. We'll take a look at what I'm talking about now. He was rushed and it's thrown way behind him and way over him as well. So, and that's been every play that uh, Harris has been pressured. So if that offensive line for California led by Jack Abercrombie, the center, uh, as long as they can hold Clarion's defense, Harris is going to have a field day. But if Clarion's defense can penetrate that offensive line well, it's going to make it really tough for Harris to sync up with his receivers. Carson back out there. Bobby Thomas next to him now. He's out the last series. Thomas gets the handoff up the middle, breaks it outside, and a 10-yard gain for a new set of downs at the 48-yard line. Yeah, there's Bobby Thomas, uh, definitely breaking through the defensive line there, and the rest of the defensive linebacker core as well. As you see him go up the gap up the right side, open up, and he'll cut back to his left and uh, gets enough yards to get the first down there. That's overall what you want as a running back. You just want to make sure you get to the first down marker uh, above anything else. Absolutely, Tyra. Bring up first and 10 from the 48 yard line. Carson is back to pass. Pass is complete to number 44 for Clarion. That is Mike Dietrich, the tight end. Yeah, Dietrich's had his number called a couple times as we have a player down for California. It looks like that might be number 52, Darnell Harding, but I'm not able to see very well from my perspective. These red jerseys kind of make it kind of hard to read those numbers. Uh, but there you see the tackle there. Uh, and uh, number nine. Coming up with the tackle on that one, that's Corey Ford, the transfer from Townsend. But Darnell, as we said, he's been banged up all year, Zach, and uh, that's proven why right there also. I mean, had that nice uh, recovered fumble, but comes up hurt again. And now we're going to look at the PSAC schedule. Edinburgh at Gannon. Gannon defeating the um, Fighting Scots 54-14. to Shippensburg at Lockhaven. Don't have an update on that one. Cheney, Kutztown. I believe that one was all knighted up at 14 last time I checked. East Stroudsburg at Westchester. Stroudsburg was winning 24-20. Indiana at Slippery Rock, we mentioned before. Slippery Rock big over IUP so far. Mercyhurst, Seton Hill. It was 13-0 Mercyhurst. And then Millersville at Bloomsburg. Don't have an update on that one yet. And luckily, Darnell Harding able to walk off in his own power. But Tyler on the replay. Looked like he landed wrong on his ankle. I could see it in the replay. So it might be just a rolled ankle. Bobby Thomas with the handoff. He gets enough for a first down. It's a three-yard gain. And it is going to be out to the 47, or excuse me, the 42-yard line. New set of downs. Yeah, Thomas now finally getting comfortable back there in the backfield and uh, finding some open holes that the Clarion offensive line is making and executing him very well ever since he's come back in on this drive. He's been running very well on three carries so far, so he's going to continue to utilize this on their offensive possession. Carson back to pass. He fumbles the ball. He fumbles the ball, so he's going to have to start running himself. He still passes the ball, and it's still complete, though. It is complete, so a strange sequence of events there, Tyler. Yeah, absolutely. I believe Josh Page was on the uh, tackle there, but I can't see. We'll take a look at the replay. So watch what happens here. Carson winds up to throw, and he just loses the laces, Zach. He just absolutely mishandled the ball. And you'll see him come back up with it, keep it himself. Finds a receiver, receiver open, though, and he throws to him. And there you see the tackle there as well. So a good play by the Vulcans to kind of keep their awareness up. But Carson needs to make sure he holds onto those laces better. Now Bobby Thomas with the handoff. He's being met outside. Looks like he has just enough for a first down for the Golden Eagles. It will be a new set of downs. That will be a new set of downs. Number eight, Rodney Gein on the tackle on that one, Zach. And you watch uh, Bobby Thomas coming up the right side. 
and you see him brought down there. Just enough for the first down, but uh, doing pretty well so far. Clarion is on their offensive possession. Uh, looks like 8.08 left in the second quarter. Uh, balls marked on the 32-yard line, so their drive so far has gone very well for them. Yeah, they've had a couple good drives building up to this one. They just stalled late. Now another handoff. No, Carson keeps it. He is going to be met outside, though, by the Vulcans' defense. That is number six, Jawan Bryant on the tackle. California doing a good job so far handling Carson, not allowing his feet to um, execute this to execute on offense to break apart this California defense. Like we said, uh, like we said in the open, Zach, uh, he's definitely a good dual threat. Uh, number 46 for the Vulcans, Spencer Lynn coming up pretty well on the tackle there. So um, California not fooled by Carson's feet. Now Carson hands it to uh, Thomas. He's going to cut it back, run to the outside. A lot of running room there. He is tackled down at the 19-yard line. That is going to be a gain of 14 yards and a new set of downs. A little bit of uh, tricks played right there. Thomas breaking it to the right and then going back to the left. Absolutely. Good job by Thomas looking to his left and noticing a lot of green there and uh, getting a lot of good rushing yards for another first down. And C.J. Towns on the tackle will uh, stop him from getting any further than he did. So uh, Thomas and company now are moving very well on offense, and they're going to look to put some points on the board. This is first time in the red zone for Clarion. Pass. It is incomplete. It was The pass was out of bounds by Carson, so um, they will bring up second and 10 from the 19. John Lee, the intended receiver on the play. Uh, John Reed, rather, the uh, intended receiver on the play for Clarion. That was a rifle from Carson. Uh, Darrell Carson does have a strong arm on him. He is a uh, redshirt freshman, Zach, so very young quarterback trying to replace the injured Ben Fiskus and uh, not doing as well as Fiskus would have through the air, but like we said, he's a dual threat quarterback, so he's able to make up for what he lacks in the air on the ground. Yeah, Carson so far 9 for 13, 52 yards through the air. Carson, this time fumbles again the snap, gets the ball away, almost intercepted. Juwan Bryant was there, looked like it might be Rodney Gein as well. Uh, lucky break there for Carson. Yeah, Carson, uh, that's his third miscued uh, time holding on to the ball there. Uh, come up with a fumble earlier and uh, a missed pass attempt there and fumbles the ball on that snap as well. So I don't think it's so much the center's fault as much as it is uh, Darrell Carson's fault. He's got to figure out a way to hold on to that football, Zach. I don't know what it's going to take, but uh, can't use any stick on that's illegal these days. Maybe try to get a glove on his left hand to get a little bit of extra control. It is third and 10 from the 19. It is a handoff. Bobby Thomas is short of the first down, gets to the 14, gain of five. So Aaron Terry on the tackle for California. Yeah, pretty good run here for Thomas. Just not able to break out past the uh, defenders of California, as you see there. The tackle made going low for the legs, and that's what you want to do on a running back. Uh, just make sure you get him down any way possible. It doesn't have to be uh, arm tackling because arm tackling nine times out of ten on a running back isn't going to get you anywhere. It's just going to be a failed tackle attempt. Uh, so good job by him going low and not allowing Thomas to break out any. And they are going for it on fourth down. Four receivers uh, trips right. Carson, he has some room. Under pressure now. He almost sacked. Pass almost incomplete by Dewey McDonald. He breaks it up, though. A turnover on downs for the Golden Eagles with 5.53 left in the first half. A nice uh, almost interception for Dewey McDonald as you take a look at the replay. Dancing around in the backfield, Carson does. He goes to his left, notices much more pressure. Goes back to his right and just tries to get the ball away. Sees his receiver there. Just uh, a lot of good zone coverage there from the Vulcan defense and able to break that play up. Yeah, Dewey McDonald, he's been a turnover machine this season. Almost had another one there. It would have been very big break for the Vulcans as they took over on the 14-yard line, 5.53 left. Handoff up the middle. That is Jeff Knox. He gets to the 22, a gain of eight on the first down play. Jeff Knox uh, getting some groundwork in now as well after seeing some carries from Derek Fiore and Nick Grissom a little bit earlier now. He's getting some runs himself ever since that big goal line touchdown that he had earlier in the game as we uh, see another play for Jeff Knox as well. 
And he gets out to the 30 yard line. That is a gain of eight again. So two eight yard gains, 16 yards total. It's gonna to be a timeout taken by Clarion now. Absolutely. Uh, 528 left. As I was saying though, Clarion uh, doing a decent job on the rush defense. Their only big uh, mess up was that running, that wide receiver reversed rather from Trey Johnson that got uh, the Vulcan 60 yards. So um, overall though, still maintaining the California rushing uh, offense. And uh, like I said, that only big play was that 60 yard run from Trey Johnson. Now we're gonna look at the Cal schedule. They are three and two in the year, two straight losses to two very good opponents. So their strength of schedule. Those are good losses, I guess you could say, to IUP and Westchester. You have Seton Hill next week, and then Gannon at home. That's going to be a very tough game. And then at Slippery Rock and Mercyhurst. Those three straight games, those are all going to be very critical, pivotal matchups for the Vulcans and their opponents as well as it gets down to crunch time in the season. And at the end of the year, you have either at Millersville or the PSAC Championship. I believe, though, us here at CU TV Sports, we will be covering the PSAC Championship as far as I know. Yeah, possibly, Zach, but nonetheless, I want to touch upon how important this game really is after coming off of two straight losses to Indiana and Westchester. If you're, if you're California, you want to get a big win here against Clarion, set yourself up for possibly another win against Seton Hill, and then you go into, like you said, three very tough matchups, especially with Gannon and Slippery Rock, though. Those two teams are very, very impressive this year. Three receivers, twins left and lone receiver to the right and Mike Williams. Handoff to Fiore, he finds some running room. It's still up, he's still not down, he keeps going. And now he's finally taken down about the 36 yard line. There is a flag on the play though, Tyler. We'll have to see what the call's gonna be. Yeah, I'm not sure myself, but good job by Fiore keeping his feet and not uh, falling victim to that arm tackle as I was speaking about earlier. Arm tackling a running back or any player really is, isn't gonna work out for you, but we'll see what the referee has to come up with as he talks to the California sidelines. It looks like an illegal shift or illegal motion on the California offense, so that will drive them back, I believe, five yards. Bring out first and 15. Yeah, tough break for the Vulcans. Uh, Coach Mike Keller can't be too happy with that one. He's uh, trying to figure out what's going on now, but he's offensively, his offense has been playing very well, Zach. I mean, uh, 14 points on the board against the Clarion team, who isn't as uh, soft as a lot of people thought they were earlier in the season proving themselves to be very good overall, three and two record. First and 15 from the 25. Just over five minutes left in the first half. Harris back to pass, has the receiver. Kwan Scott over the middle. He's at the 45 and stopped at the 46 yard line. A gain of 21 yards. Finally gets a call to Kwan Scott's name today on a good completion. Absolutely, you use that height to of Kwan Scott to your advantage. Not so much on this play, but that's typically what Harris likes to do. We take a look at the replay as Kwan Scott comes over the middle. He just stops right in the breadbasket, right in the numbers, right where the receiver likes it, and he takes it upfield. Now handoff to Jeff Knox. He breaks it outside. He's at the 45, 40, 35. He keeps going. Taking out at the 30-yard line. So a gain of 23 yards on that play, Tyler. We have not seen Jeff Knox run like this all season. Absolutely, I was about to say that, Zach. That's the first time we've seen Jeff Knox break to the outside like that and be successful with it. And uh, it's proven very well for him so far. Harris, handoff to Fiore. He tries to get outside now, getting in on the act at the 25, taken out. And it might be a flag for a late hit. And there is a flag now. Two flags being thrown. Looks like now might be a late hit out of bounds penalty against Clarion. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going on, Zach. We saw one flag turn, we saw another flag turn as well. These might be offsetting penalties. Uh, definitely brought down very violently and very late as well, Zach. But uh, a, a, helmet, a helmet came ripping off. I believe it might have been for Fiori's. Uh, it might be Fiori's helmet that might have came off, but the referees are going to talk this one over and try to get the best call possible. A lot of things going wrong on that play, but uh, it comes down to the referee staff now to try to figure out which one was right and which one was wrong. Absolutely, Tyler. The referees always try to do their best when they get calls or penalty calls or turnovers or touchdowns as well. We're really close to the goal line. They're still huddling up. Um, from the look of it, it looks like they might be driving the ball back, but I'm not exactly sure yet as we get the call now. What? It's going to be a personal foul against California and then a personal foul against Clarion. It is offsetting penalties though, Tyler. 
Yeah, you see the replay here. Fiore breaking to the outside. And there you see him being brought down violently. That's a late hit. So that's the personal foul for Fiore. And Fiore actually rips the helmet off of number 41 for um, Clarion. And that's Ryan McC uh, That's not Ryan McCauley. I'm sorry. That's the wrong rush. That's Corey McNamara. We've said his name before. So that's what uh, Fiore gets in trouble for on that one. And now we see Nick Grissom checking in for the Vulcans uh, as Jeff Knox checks out. Yeah, I'd like to see maybe Nick Grissom can break an outside run towards the end zone here. Uh, 4.17 left in the first half. Harris under center, two receivers, and I believe two tight ends on the play as well. And McCauley in at fullback as well. He's split out. Hand off to Grissom. He goes up the middle. He is met, though, at about the 18. That's a uh, two-yard, or a season at 17. That's a three-yard gain, so Grissom still not losing any yards. No, I was... Maybe expecting Grissom to go back to the outside. You know, we saw Knox do it. We saw Fiore do it. Why not make it the trifecta and let Grissom do it? But nonetheless, getting positive yards on that one and uh, setting the Vulcans up for a closer second and seven attempt. Second and seven from the 17. Need to get to the 10. We'd make it first and goal if they did so. Harris taking a little bit of time off the clock. Three and a half minutes left. He is back to pass, rolling to his right. Has a receiver and is intercepted in the end zone by Clarion. He has some running room, taken down at the 16 yard line, so a bad break right there for James Harris. He had no interceptions last week, that's his first in the last two games. Adam Lynch on the interception on that play, Zach will break this one down for you. As Harris rolls out to his right side, he sees his receiver open in Kawan Scott, but the uh, play is read perfectly by Lynch as you see him there on that one. Cut back to his left to take it up the field a little ways there to about the 16 yard line. So great zone defense there from Clarion and uh, just comes up with a big turnover in the uh, end zone and stops California from putting more points up on the board with 319 left. Clarion's gonna look to put some points on the board of their own, but they have a long drive ahead of them to do so. Absolutely, Tyler, 319 left in the first half. First and 10 from the 16 yard line. Carson, handoff up the middle to Thomas. He tries to break it outside. Taken down about the 19, a gain of three on the play. Yeah, just a typical run play to the outside. Thomas not able to uh, get much going on that play. Gains about three yards on the carry. But uh, California's defensive end doing a good job of uh, coming out and stopping the run there. Uh, that sea of red jerseys just kind of swarms around Bobby Thomas and takes him down before he can break anything. It'll be second and eight from the 18. They're actually going to, or excuse me, second and seven from the 19. The scoreboard and the field markers are a little different. We'll go with the field markers, though. Second and seven. Trips left. Hand off up the middle. Thomas up. Matt immediately. No, Carson has it. Carson has the ball. Excuse me. He is met for a one-yard gain at the 20. So Bobby Thomas faked me out, but Carson had it all the time. Yeah, we definitely thought the running back had the ball there, but Carson was able to keep it himself and gain a yard out of it as well. So uh, what we thought was a blown, uh, blown play for Clarion turns out to be somewhat productive and gets an extra yard to make it a third and six. Ball's now located on the 20 yard line. Time sticking away though, 206 left in the first half. And we hit the two minute warning. There is no two minute warning, but I always like to make that a marker. Two minutes left, Carson back to pass, under some pressure, has a receiver, almost intercepted, almost had a chance to be completed as well as Tyrone Taylor on the tip. Yeah, good job by Taylor breaking that one up, though. I uh, thought he might have been able to come down with it, but just uh, not exactly able to put his hands on it. But uh, Tyrone Taylor's had two very nice plays so far in this game. Zach, a name that we don't call all that often, but definitely being a big presence there in the defensive backfield. Trey Johnson back to return the punt. He'll have some return room, hopefully, on this one. He's got a lot of green behind him as well as... We see Conway on, I believe this is his fourth punt of the game so far, Tyler, with 151 left. Punt is away, it is a very short punt. Bounces at the 50. Trey Johnson will take it though, evades the defender. Breaks another one, goes towards the sideline. Goes out at about the 42 and now we have a flag on the play. And we see some extracurriculars going on on the bench. The Clarion player getting into it with Trey Johnson. We did see a flag fly. We'll have to get what the calls are. I believe one of these will definitely go on California, though. 
And we'll have to see exactly what happens um, preceding the play after what goes on at the bench. Yeah, number 42 for Clarion getting into it on that one. That was Jordan Lardini. Lardini. Lard Lord Danny, rather, I can't pronounce his name right now. Just a lot of things taking place there. I think he kind of realized uh, on the bench that he was on the wrong side of the bench and that he kind of needs to calm down a little bit. Good job by the referees coming in there, though, and breaking apart uh, anything from happening or getting out of hand there. Uh, I don't think Lord Danny wanted anything to do with that. Uh, the California player just kind of drove him into the bench and never stopped uh, fighting back. So tempers will flare in a football game, Zach. Things will happen. Boys will be boys. Uh, fortunately, the referees were able to get in there, though, and just kind of break that one up, not let it get out of control because, I mean, things can go seriously wrong whenever you have an entire team against one individual. Uh, so fortunately, though, overall nothing happening, but the referees are going to huddle up and try to see what kind of calls are going to be made on this one. Uh, I'm guessing, I'm assuming, a lot of them are going to go against California, though. Yeah, I only saw two penalty flags in a play, but there could always be more as we're about to get the call now, Tyler. We're going to see a personal foul against California. Or, excuse me, a holding on California. Now a personal oh, foul against right. California. So... No penalties against Clarion, which is a little bit surprising. Usually you might see offsetting penalties when it comes to personal fouls. Referees like to do that, so they don't look like they're going against one team or something like that. But that will drive California back all the way to the 35-yard line in their own territory. Yeah, Lardini was kind of defenseless on that one, so I, don't, I wouldn't expect a uh, personal foul from then. California just kind of getting a little too rough. Uh, and obviously that holding call, like we said, that first call was the original flag. Uh, but then, like we said, that second flag was thrown after the play was dead. So that was the personal foul. But Harris, with a minute 38 left on the board, is going to look to put some extra points on this board. But it's going to be interesting to see how they run a two-minute uh, two offense. Harris center center. Handoff to Knox. He tries to break it outside. He does. He gets to the 40. To the 45. Keeps going. Brought down at the 47-yard line. That is good for a first down, Tyler. Makes Absolutely, on. as you saw, um, a nice misdirection there another for Knox. And it looks like there's going to be another flag on the play as we see some yellow laundry out there on the field. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what this one's going to be for, but like I was saying, a nice halfback misdirection uh, by Jeff Knox going up that right side. He's liking that right side right now, utilizing it very well. If the play stands, it's going to be a first down, but we'll see what the referee has to say. It's going to be... A personal foul against California, so that will drive them back. It might be a spot foul. I'm not exactly sure yet, Tyler. I don't believe it is going to be, though. Or actually, it is going to be a spot foul, so they'll be at about the 32-yard line. Really only a loss of three, and it'll be first down yet again. Yeah, that'll probably bring them back a little bit. Like you said, it's going to be about uh, what looks like it's going to be first I don't know, they're moving the yard six now. It's going to be first and ten. It's just going to push them back a little bit. So first and ten for the Vulcans. Uh, minute 25 left. That's a little strange. It's first and ten from the 32-yard line now. Harris back to pass. Has the deep ball and a receiver there. Pass incomplete. Kawan Scott not able to come down with it. Just a little bit Kawan overrun on that one. Uh, definitely a lot of good pressure there from Clarion as we see number... Uh, 33 running back from the play, but we'll take a look at the replay. A good throw from Harris, and it's brought, almost brought down by Kawan Scott. Just a little bit uh, overrun on that one, a little bit thrown, thrown a little bit behind him. Number 33 on the coverage is Kawaku Asamoa. So um, definitely a good big name for uh, Clarence defense. He's a returning player, so um, great job by him breaking up the play. Second and 10 now. Handoff to Knox. He has some running room up the middle. Gets to the 40-yard line. They'll mark him at the 41. So he'll be about two, one or two yards short of a first down with a minute left. Yeah, it's Cla uh, California, rather, is not going to take a timeout. They're just going to let the play clock run out and let the uh, half end, I'm guessing, just by uh, wasting the rest of the clock. So a good first half of action so far from both teams. Harris back to pass. Has to receive it. That's Mike Williams. He has it. He's at midfield. He's trying to run out. He is taken down at the 48 in Clarion territory. There's a flag on the play though, Tyler, so we'll have to see what the call's gonna be. Yeah, a flag is certain way in the backfield. It looks like it's gonna be against California. 
Uh, not sure exactly what it is. Hopefully it's not another personal foul because that will only push back California even deeper. But we'll see what the uh, official white half referee has to say. We are about to get the call now, Tyler. Illegal shift on California, so that will bring up another third down. Might be third and six, I believe, for the Vulcans. The man in the slot was now it's going to be a timeout for the Vulcans called by Coach Mike Keller. Yeah, good call, good called timeout there for California. They're going to try to reassess what they want to do here. I think if you wanted to call a timeout, though, you wanted to do it a little bit earlier and try to utilize that last minute of play on the clock. But now the clock is at 39 seconds. It's going to be third and six for the Vulcans. Ball located on the 36. But like I was saying, Zach, good first half of action. Uh, I would agree from both teams. I mean, Claire only letting up 14 points, uh, staying pretty strong on defense, not allowing um, California to convert very much on third down. Uh, but California's offense, uh, James Harris is not completely able to sync up with, with his receivers. He did very well on the Mike uh, Williams touchdown. But overall, the running game has really stepped up for the Vulcans, Zach. I mean, you have to agree with that. Trey Johnson on a nice 60-yard wide receiver reverse. Jeff Knox has really been stepping up big time now that he's officially healthy, getting to the outside and getting a lot of yardage. Yeah, California so far has 161 rushing yards, 61 of them from Trey Johnson. So they have eclipsed the century mark with the regular stable of backs as well. It is third and six from the 36. Harris back to pass. The ball is tipped by Clarion. That will bring up fourth down and six. With about 35 seconds left. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, number 99 was the one who batted that one down. It's Brandon Short on the uh, defensive end. But I'm not too sure. But nonetheless, good job by Clarion, as we said defensively, s really stopping uh, California from making anything big happen. Uh, I mean, only letting out 14 points, one big uh, bend uh, in, uh, in defense, letting Mike Williams get a big touchdown. But other than that, playing fairly well. Andrew Surratt on for, I believe, his second punt of the day. Surratt to do the kicking. The snap is a little high. Surratt has it, though. It is a deep punt. Going to be fair caught at the 19 yard line. Actually, they're gonna mark it at the 20 yard line. So basically a touchback there, Tyler. 28 seconds left. Clarion does have two timeouts, but I would not be surprised if they just came out and took a knee. Yeah, they might try to make something happen, Zach, but I mean, with only 28 seconds, there's not very, very much you can do. Uh, I mean, yeah, obviously points before going into half would be nice, especially since California's getting the ball in the second half. Uh, trying to put some points up. Uh, would be ideal because you know you don't you don't want that 14 point deficit going into halftime. You'd like to cut it down a little bit, but um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what Clarion comes out to do here. If they just like to take the knee and uh, let the halftime come on, commence, and or if they try to go for something and make something happen in 28 seconds. And it looks like they are going to be setting up to go for it. Tyler Darrell Carson has three receivers, twins right, one on his left. It's a handoff up the middle though, for about a gain of nothing on the play so it'll most likely be the last play of the first half although I believe no timeout was called so that will be the last play of the first half Tyler it's been a good half for both teams so far California with a 14 nothing lead yeah if you're clearing you just gotta make some second half uh, adjustments in the locker room and try to come out on offense a little bit better than you had in the first half but Overall, good football from both teams, Zach, and I'm sure you're going to be able to expect that in the second half as well. Absolutely. When we come back here on CU TV Sports, we'll have halftime. It's 14-0 California. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. CU TV always has the action. And now you can too by ordering CU TV programming on DVD. To own your favorite CU TV moments, just send $16.95 in a check payable to SAI, care of CU TV programming order, 
250 University Avenue, California, PA, 15419. Order now. Need to know what's happening in your area? CU TV News Center brings you your best local news. Events on and around campus. Local weather. Vulcan sports coverage. CU TV News Center, live Thursdays at 5. High School Roundup, bringing you the best coverage of high school football in Western Pennsylvania. Tune in for scores, highlights, analysis, and the best plays from the previous week, plus previews and predictions of the week's biggest games, standings from across the region, and news from around the state. High School Roundup. Catch it. Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays on CUTV. Welcome back to Vulcan Football 2013, brought to you by First Niagara Bank. JD Waterproofing. UPMC Health Plan. Lease Supply Company. As well as Trip Total Media. And Tyler. We welcome you back to second half. California with a 14 nothing lead. We're going to look at some of the stats brought to you by Trip Total Media. Well, thank you for having me back, Zach. But, yeah, let's go ahead and look back at those halftime stats. You see rushing yards greater than passing yards for both teams, but that's more significant for California, Zach, as you see uh, any of the halftime stats in the past, uh, the past couple of weeks. You've never seen rushing higher than those passing yards. Uh, total offense, though, California leads 287 to 122, equal in turnovers, eight penalties for California. Uh, that's been killing them so far, but the time of possession is in Clarion's favor as well. So we'll uh, go ahead and take a look um, at the kickoff now, Zach, as Clarion prepares to uh, kick off. Yeah, Tyler, we'll look at some of the top plays in the first half after kickoff has commenced and is returned. Looks like Terrell Roberson and Jerry Brown back there for the Vulcans. This is actually the first kickoff return they will have all day, um, excluding punt returns, of course. Trey Johnson has a couple of those, but first time we've seen the kickoff return unit on the field. And the kick is away. Taken by Jerry Brown at the two-yard line, and he will return it. He is working his way up the middle. He has one defender to be. He is on the outside. He is at the 50, the 45. Taken down at the 40 in Clarion territory, but there is a flag on the field, Tyler. Yeah, there is a flag, a flag on the play rather, and um, we take a look. You saw the you saw the play, Tamen. So we'll see what the referee has to say. Um, but nonetheless, looks like it's going to be a uh, holding call on the uh, Vulcans. So that's going to bring them back a little bit. But nonetheless, it was a very good play, Zach, as they. Uh, as Brown kind of came up, the rest of the Vulcans tried to come up the block, but they kind of took him out in the process of doing that. Uh, I mean, he wouldn't have got much further with or without their blockers, but uh, a great return, but now that's going to bring them back back to what looks like a 31-yard line now, actually a 26-yard line, and that's where Harrison Company is going to have to set up shot. That would have been the second consecutive kickoff return for a touchdown if Brown had made it all the way to the end zone. Roberson had 99 yards last week against Westchester. Now a handoff up the middle to Jeff Knox. He is taken down at the line of scrimmage, so no gain on the play will bring up second and 10. Yeah, Jeff Knox not able to get anything going on that play. 31 on the tackle for that one on Clarion's team is uh, Kyle McReith. So a good job by the linebacker there getting in there and breaking up uh, the play and stopping Jeff Knox from doing anything uh, productive. Second and 10 for the Vulcans, three receivers, twins right. Lone receiver to the left. Harris back to pass. He has Mike Williams wide open at the 30. Goes to the 35. Stays on his feet. Taken down at the 36. Looks like it's going to be just enough for a new set of downs, Tyler. 
Yeah, forward progress, it just should just be enough, but he might have went back on his neck. Yeah, that's going to give it the 36-yard line, so that will be enough for the first down. You take a look at the replay. There it is, caught. He's going to take it upfield. He's going to try to spin off that tackler, which he does successfully. However, the rest of that clearing defense comes in to tackle Peter Rivera, the safety on the tackle. So first and 10 from the 36-yard line for the Balkans. Handoff to Knox. He will get maybe one or two yards on the play. A very short gain on first down. will bring up about second and nine. I tell you what, though, it, it looked like he was going to be brought down at the line of scrimmage, which he almost was. We'll take a look at the replay. He takes it up, and he kind of gets brought forward a little bit by that Clarion player. So he's able to gain at least one yard on that one. So it's not a total failure. Uh, every yard counts in football. Now going no huddle. Three receivers and two running backs in the backfield. Harris is back to pass. Under a little bit of pressure, Mike Williams with the completion at the 47-yard line. That is good enough for a first down against Tyler. Mike Williams, two first down conversions on this drive. Yeah, that offensive line for California doing a very good job uh, rush blocking right now. Harris a little pressure on that play, but Harris is comfortable under pocket. Now he's connecting with his receivers better, especially Mike Williams on the past two plays. Yeah, if James Harris can get things going, not only this week, but later in the season, California has a very good chance of maybe getting into the playoffs for the NCAA. Harris under center. He fakes the handoff to Fiore. He goes way down the field. Williams is the receiver there. Almost intercepted, actually. Williams looked like he was actually becoming the defender on that one. Number 41 for Clarion. That is Corey McNamara almost with the interception. Yeah, McNamara played great defense covering him all day. As you see uh, Schroeder take a big step back, uh, and he throws deep to uh, Williams. You see both of these players go up, and, yeah, McNamara had his hands all over that one, but good job by Mike Williams breaking up that one. So it will be second and 10 from the 47 with 12.47 left in the third quarter. Fiore at the sidecar to the left. Three receivers for the Vulcans. Harris back to pass. Short pass completion to Mike Williams right at midfield. They'll actually mark him maybe just a little bit past, like inches past at the 50-yard line. So it'll be a gain of three yards, bring up third and seven. Yeah, good job by Williams holding on to the ball here, trying to break free, just not able to do so. Mike Williams, uh, a tough receiver, but McNamara is a very tough defensive back as well. So he's been all over Williams all game, and uh, McNamara is really not bending that much. Now James Harris in a pistol formation. He is back to pass, under a little bit of pressure, though. Gets the pass away, almost completed to Trey Johnson. It was behind him, though. Trey Johnson actually going down on his knees. Trying to make an attempt to catch the ball. It will bring up fourth and seven right at midfield for the Vulcans. Number five, Julian, uh, number five, Julian Hauser. Uh, definitely helping out, breaking up that play, as well as what I believe is number 36. And that's Brian Palmier. Um, so both of those players doing great as linebackers, breaking up that play, pressuring Harris and not allowing him to get comfortable to get that play off um, well enough for Johnson to catch. Andrew Surratt. On the punt for the Vulcans, a little bit of high snap. He handles it, though, and it's a deep punt. It will not be fair cut, though. It'll keep rolling and be stuffed right at the 10-yard line by the Vulcan defender. And, Tyler, we're going to look at some PSAC headlines now. There are five undefeated teams remaining in divisional play. Um, there are three teams are undefeated overall. IUP, though, they lost. Uh, Bloomsburg and Westchester. Westchester, I know won. Bloomsburg, I don't know their result yet. And then after two weeks of crossovers, the West leads 9-7 to seven out of the 16 games. Yeah, that's actually going to be four teams left undefeated now uh, in the PSAC now that um, IUP has went down to Slippery Rock. Slippery Rock, a very, very tough team. And uh, they're showing why against IUP, basically almost shutting them out, but just not quite letting up uh, only a few points. Yeah, they won 42-16. As the first play from scrimmage for the Golden Eagles is a two-yard run by Bobby Thomas. So he'll bring up second and eight from about the 12-yard line. 11.45 left. Yeah, the, the, the Golden Eagles made a very good drive um, last in the second quarter, Zach, last half. And uh, they're going to look to do the same thing again, but it all gets started with that running game, especially with Bobby Thomas back there uh, doing a good job once he came back into the game, uh, executing well, breaking through the Vulcan defenders. 
and uh, he's going to try to do the same thing again, but we'll see what kind of second-half adjustments the Vulcans made to maybe try to prevent that now. Darrell Carson and the shotgun. Hands it off again, though, up the middle. And that is number 22 for Clarion. That is Chris Liberto. He gains his way out to about the eight, or the 17-yard line. That will be a gain of five. It will be third and three. Yeah, Liberto now getting, I believe, what is his first carry of the game. And B.J. Stevens coming up with the uh, tackle on that one, so able to bring him down. That will bring up, like you said, a third and short opportunity for Clarion. 10.53 left in this one in the third quarter at least. So um, if you're Clarion, you've got to figure something out here. Probably going to go to the ground again. That's been their most popular thing to do. Three receivers, one in motion, though. Carson is back to pass. He fumbles the ball again, though. He's done that a few times today. He's under some pressure, trying to run for himself. He will get it for the first down, taking it at the 25. Uh, they're going to mark him at the 24, actually. Darrell Carson, although he's not been able to hold on the ball very well, Tyler, he's made some very productive plays for the Eagles. Yeah, he tended to go through the air to get that third down conversion, but he lo loses the ball again. Anthony McBoyle trying to come up with the tackle, just not fast enough to keep up with Carson. And he brings up the right side and beats Noah Taylor as well. It goes out of bounds, so that moves the chains for the first down for the Golden Eagles. Um, Carson's still just struggling, still struggling to hold on to that ball. He's got to figure out a way to do it. Yeah, I'm sure it has to put the coaches on notice every time the ball goes on the ground. You have to be nerve-wracking as a head coach. Now, there's a handoff. Up the middle to Liberto. He gets his way to the 29-yard line, a gain of five on the play. That will bring up second and five for the Golden Eagles. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of Liberto now on this drive, and we saw a lot of other um, players getting the touches there on the defense, on, on Russia, rather, uh, for the Clarion Golden Eagles. But no longer we don't see too much of uh, Bobby Thomas in this series. Uh, wondering as to why that is, he might just be, they might just be utilizing their running back situation or um, Bobby Thomas might be injured. We're not too sure yet. We haven't received any notice on that. Yeah, there was a time in the game earlier in the first half he was out as well. Carson back to pass. He fakes the deep ball. He's still got some time though. The Cal defensive line, nowhere to find him. Deep pass, incomplete, just out of the reach of the receiver. That was number 89, the intended receiver, Eric Fry. He is a freshman, and the defender for California. We'll have to look at the replay who that was. Yeah, I was surprised to see that pump fake there from Carson, considering that he has lost control of his ball almost five times now in this game, Zach. And uh, nonetheless, he is able to hold on to it there. And you see the receivers down uh, downfield, and you see Dewey McDonald on the coverage. That ball just overthrown, though, and Fry's not able to come up with it. Yeah, it's kind of like Ben Roethlisberger for the Steelers. He pump fakes all the time. I'm always afraid when I'm watching the ball might come out. He has such big hands, he's able to hold on to it. Darrell Carson, as I believe Clarion's about to take a timeout, and they are. Darrell Carson, he pump fakes. You have the uh, risk of losing the ball. And now, Tyler, we're going to look as we hear the top 25, right? The AFCA Top 25, you're correct, and the big one right there, IUP, they will be dropping, of course, after they lost to Slippery Rock. Westchester, they won today. And then Bloomsburg, Shepard, and Winston-Salem all in the Super Region with California. Absolutely. Valdosta State still sitting at top as they won, I believe, the overall championship last year, Zach. You might see Slippery Rock uh, sneak their way up in there after beating IUP. Uh, there's a good chance of that. They have a very good program there, only with one loss on the year. So you might see them sneak their way in there. Westchester's holding strong now after a good win this, uh, this Saturday trying to figure out uh, their overall ranking now. So a lot of good Super Region teams in there, five of them to be exact, and we might see six by the end of uh, next week. You might see, like I said, I, I could imagine Slipper Rock's going to be in there now, especially with a big win like that. Absolutely, Tyler. So as Clary makes her way back out in the field for a third and five from the 29, 9.18 left in the third quarter. They're down 14 nothing. Carson in the shotgun. He has three receivers. He's back to pass. Trying to find some room. He is a little under pressure. Pass incomplete. The defender for the Vulcans. We'll have to see who that was. Looks like C.J. Towns. We touched on him in our open. Yeah, Mike Dietrich, uh, the attended receiver on that one. Uh, looks like there actually is two Dietrichs on the roster, Zach. You look at number 43, Zach Dietrich, and number 44, Mike Dietrich. Uh, Mike was the attended receiver on that play, not able to come up with a good defensive play from C.J. Towns as he's able to break up that pass, and they're going to cause uh, Clarion to punt yet again. Clarion 
not able to get any points so far this game as there's just 9-12 left in the third quarter. Now Nathan, or excuse me, Nathan Conway, yes, on the punt again for the Golden Eagles. This has to be at least his fifth punt in the day. As it is away, Trey Johnson back to return for the Vulcans, taken at the 21. Has some open running room. Hurdles the defender and then taken in midair right at the 41 yard line. So a 20 yard return for Air Trey. And now, Tyler, we have a uh, segment on CUTV Tweet of the Week. You can tweet us at CUTV underscore PA or include the hashtag CUTV booth in your tweet. For have it read live on air, but Tyler, we don't have one this week. So why don't you tell the fans how important it is to get their tweets read live on air? It's so important to have your tweets read live on air because you get your followers up, Zach. You always want to get your followers up. That's a big thing, especially if you're going to market yourself and network a little bit. But nonetheless, it's good to see what the fans think of our broadcast, what they think and what they expect in the games to come. Uh, every Friday night we usually have it for high school football and every Saturday for the California Vulcan football game. So it's definitely something that you guys want to take advantage of because it's always a fun thing that we do here for CUTV. Now a three-yard run by Nick Grissom on the play. So, again, gaining some yards out there. And we see a couple subs, Desmond Green and Ryan McCauley out for the Vulcans, Derek Fiore. And I believe Trey Johnson in as their substitutes. There's three receivers on the play this time and two sidecars next to Harris. Second and seven. There's a handoff to Fiore. Tries to find some running room on the outside. Gets to about the 43-yard line. Or excuse me, that's actually the 48-yard line. I was wrong on that one. So a gain of four brings up third and three, Tyler. Yeah, California's really liking that right side to go up, Zach. They've been executing it uh, ever since the second quarter opened up, and they're executing it again now. Uh, Fiore likes that right side, and Jeff Knox definitely liking that right side right now. So they found a weakness in the defense, and they've been pointing it out pretty much ever since the second quarter started. Now third and three, Harris under center. Bunch formation at the line, one receiver. Now there's a bunch snap by Grissom, and... Well, Tyler, that looks like that will end his streak of consecutive yards gained on each run. Nick Grissom taking down for a loss after a botched pitch from Harris. Yeah, not much he could do done on that one. We'll see the replay of the pitch there. It was actually right in Grissom's hands, and Grissom wasn't able to uh, hold on to it. So there was a lot more that he could have done, actually, to hold on to that one and get something positive out of it. But nonetheless, it's going to pin them back to a fourth and ten situation, and you're going to see Andrew Surratt come out to yet again punt for the Vulcans. Surrett out for the punt, like you said. The punt returner for Bloom, or uh, excuse me, Clarion, not Bloomsburg, is Eric Fries. He has a little bit of room, taken down at the 20-yard line. And Tyler, another way we already mentioned the tweet of the week. Another way you can interact with us on the CUTV crew is our poll of the week. You can check out the weekly poll on our Facebook page now at. Uh, California University Television. You can also comment on some of our videos we post. You can like us. Uh, you can leave, uh, we already said comments. You can leave any messages for us and we might be able to read them on air. Or just leave any constructive criticism you might have of us as well. It's always nice to hear from the fans. Yeah, you know, we have a lot of fans and they like what we do, so you should like us on Facebook so we know that you like us. Carson with the pass complete and the defender meets him immediately. That was... Rodney Gian on the uh, defense and Bobby Thomas on the completion. Yeah, good job by Gian. Uh, shoulder tackling, so shoulder tackling rather, the uh, receiver out of bounds. That's Bobby Thomas now checking back into the game there. Uh, not wrapping him up. Just go ahead and give him a nice little shoulder, uh, shoulder tackle out of bounds. And it's nice to see Bobby Thomas back in the game. Definitely splitting time with some other uh, running backs in the in the system. So um, I guess that's good for Clarion. It's similar to what Cal does with their three running backs. Now a handoff up the middle to Thomas. He has some running room at the 42-yard line. He has finally taken down a gain of 14. And Tyler, a key note, C.J. Towns has just been taken to the sidelines, limping off the field. So a key um, development in the game. Absolutely, but by the looks of it, Zach, that actually wasn't going to be Bobby Thomas on the carry. It's number 22, Chris Liberto on the carry. So... That's going to be Chris Liberto's other attempt now. Bobby Thomas checking out of the game. So um, not sure what's going on there again. But, yeah, losing Towns will definitely hurt this Vulcan defense. 
Now Bobby Thomas on the handoff. He is taken down at the 45-yard line, a gain of three. Just under six minutes left in the third quarter. It'll be second and seven. Yeah, I think that's exactly what they're doing, Zach. They're just utilizing fresh legs uh, that they have on offense for the running back position between Liberta, between Thomas, between uh, I believe we saw another uh, back back there earlier in the game. So they're just working with what they have. It's what the Vulcans do. They do very decently well with it. I mean, especially in this game with Knox, Grissom, and Fiore. So, uh, I mean, complete the trifecta with three running backs. Now it's handed off to Liberto. He is met right at the line of scrimmage, but gains one yard off of it. So it'll bring up third and six. From the 46-yard line, the uh, Golden Eagles need to get to the 48 for a first down. Yeah, a long third down attempt here. Not very long, about pretty moderate, actually. It's going to be about third and six, like you said. Zach Ball's located now on the 46-yard line, and that's where Liberto went down. So um, it looks like Liberto, I mean, they're definitely, like I said, I mean, Liberto was lined up in the fullback position there. So, um, I mean, Clarence is trying to explore their options here, especially with their dual-threat quarterback um, in Darrell Carson. He's able to make stuff happen on the ground as well. Terrell Carson back to pass under some pressure. He is almost sacked. Jalen Fields has him. Now he is finally sacked by number 47 for the Vulcans. Maurice Dixon has him down, and there looks like there's an injured player on the field, but he has gotten up. Yeah, good job by Dixon uh, handling the quarterback Carson there very well. And it looks like the person, the player rather, with his uh, helmet off in the game was number 89. 89 on our um, roster is Jalen Fields. Uh, he won for the tackle originally, but not able to hold on to Carson. So that's going to bring up a fourth down and 10 for the Eagles. And that's going to make them punt again for the sixth time in the day. And that was the first sack in three games almost, Tyler, for the Vulcans. Finally getting one here against the Clarion offensive line and Darrell Carson. Snap a little low, punt almost blocked. Trey Johnson back to receive at the 22 yard line, he takes it. Tries to run it outside, tries to go in between two defenders, taken down at the 31 yard line, a nine yard return. Number that's 42 how on the tackle. I'm sorry to interrupt you there, Zach Jerome Matthews. But yeah, we'll go ahead and look at the D2Football.com top 25 poll. And there you still, still see five Super Region 1 um, Contenders in that one, Indiana, probably like we said, going to fall a little bit. You might see Slippery Rock move their way up there, but I mean, Bloomsburg, Shepard, Winston-Salem, Westchester. Winston-Salem actually plays at the Madhouse. They like to call it Bauman Gray Stadium, a beautiful facility down there, very historic. Absolutely, Tyler, and a lot of Super Region 1 teams. It's going to be hard to get a playoff spot this year. As Fiore takes a handoff up the middle, he's taken down about the 34-yard line for a gain of three. So California still trying to run the ball a little bit. I haven't seen as many outside runs as Nick Grissom actually comes in, so we might see one here, but still going no huddle as well. Yeah, uh, Harris has really adapted to that no huddle offense. They like to slow it down whenever he first entered the game uh, two weeks back in Indiana. Now he's getting used to, again to the no huddle offense, and um, they're utilizing it fairly well with him. Harris back to pass. Has a receiver. It was Kawan Scott. Takes it at the 47-yard line. Plenty of yards enough for a first down. Kawan Scott, second time he's had a completion today. Looks like Kawan Scott a little shaken up on that play. Might be cramping up a little bit. He's going to come off to the sidelines. But you take a look at the pass. Uh, Harris, a little pressure there by the Clarion team and McNamara and company all over Kawan Scott, not making, making sure he doesn't get any further than he already had. But a big first down for the Vulcans. First and 10 from the 47-yard line. Three minutes left in the third quarter. It's a handoff to Knox. He breaks it outside, gets to midfield, keeps going, keeps going. Taken down at the 46 on the Clarion side of the field. So a gain of seven yards on that play will bring up second and three. Yeah, good play here by Knox as he goes up the left side this time rather than the right. Breaking through a couple defenders and uh, getting eventually brought down by that big cluster of white jerseys. Uh, not in time though as he gains. Uh, a few couple of yards there, gain of seven, so that'll line them up a little bit better for the second down play. Second and three, 223 left in the third quarter. Harris under center, two receivers, one on each side, and Knox in the backfield. Harris looking to pass. He will run it himself, though. He's at the 40, 
running out at the 36 yard line. So a gain of 10 yards on that play on the quarterback keeper from Harris. Yeah, we've seen Harris keep the ball couple, himself a couple times, Zach, and uh, he looks for his receivers on that play, couldn't find any. So he just decided to take it up himself. Uh, like we, like I said, though, he, he does, uh, doesn't mind taking the ball himself. He does fairly well with it. He uh, usually gets pretty decent yardage out of it, um, but he likes to stick in that pocket too. He's a pretty balanced quarterback, I'd say. Absolutely, Tyler. Some true athleticism out of Harris being shown right there on that play. Same set. This time, Knox with the handoff. He breaks it outside at the 35, the 30. Taken down at the 29-yard line, so a gain of seven. Again, Jeff Knox. We were talking at halftime. He looked like he's running better than he has all season, Tyler. Yeah, that week off definitely might have helped him. Not, I mean, physically for sure, but even with his mindset as well, just to kind of relax, take a break, uh, and kind of regroup a little bit. And he's been running very well in this game, Zach, and I'm sure you're going to see that continue um, with the upcoming quarter. Harris under center, two receivers, both to the left side. Nick Grissom in the backfield. It's a handoff to Grissom, and he will try to work his way up the middle. He'll be taken down about the 33-yard line. He will, or he will be a yard short from the first down, so we'll bring up second and, or third and one, excuse me. Good job by number 97 for the Eagles on that play. Andrew Fraggle, uh, Fraggle rather, uh, on the stop on that one. So bringing down Grayson before he can get past that, um, what looks like the... Uh, what was it, the 26-yard line, rather. So able to stop him before Grissom gets the first down, and that'll bring up a third and short. Third and one, 40 seconds left in the third quarter. Harris taking his time, five on the play clock. Two, one on the play clock, and he finally gets the snap off. He fakes the handoff. Just run, he's under some pressure, and he will be sacked at the 37-yard line, Julian Hauser. On the play, we touched on him in our open as the player to watch for Clarion. Absolutely, Hauser is a weapon to watch if you're Clarion's defense. And you see the uh, roll out to the left, the nice play action play there, but uh, that line was just, for uh, California, was just very confused and losing some assignments. And that'll happen as time is now ticking down to one second. And that'll be the last play of the third quarter, Zach. And that it is, and when we come back, when we come back, we will have fourth quarter action. It's 14 nothing California here on CUTV. Need to know what's happening in your area? CUTV News Center brings you your best local news. Events on and around campus. Local weather. Vulcan sports coverage. CUTV News Center, live Thursdays at 5. You are watching CUTV, California University Television. Welcome back. We're about to have some fourth quarter action underway. You see 14-0 on your Lee Supply Company scoreboard. Andrew Surrett about to come out for the punt for the Falcons. Actually, no. Surrett taking his helmet off, shaking his head. Probably wondering why you're not letting me out there. They're going to go for it. Fourth and 11 from the 37-yard line. But Tyler, you have to watch and see if Harris can kick it himself. Yeah, I mean, this isn't a totally terrible decision here. I mean, trust your defense has been working well so far all game. Uh, could go either way for the Vulcans. Harris back to pass. Throws it. Mike Williams catches it at the 10-yard line and taken down at the 8-yard line. So a completion of 29 yards. Big fourth down conversion. Harris gets rocked on this play, Zach. You take a look at the replay. Such a big hit there. But nonetheless, able to get the pass off, and it's completed by Mike Williams, and that puts them in the goal, uh, in the goals, um, first and goal area. So ball on the eight-yard line. That's going to allow the Vulcans to uh, get a little closer to scoring position. First and goal from the eight-yard line, Tyler. Handoff up the middle to Knox. He will get to about the two-yard line, so a gain of six on that play. 
14 and a half minutes left in the game overall. If the Vulcans can add one here, their defense is going to have to hold on. Clarion hasn't put up any ports on the board today as we see another snap. Jeff Knox, he is into the end zone, I believe, for the touchdown. I believe and that's going to stand Zach as a touchdown. Even though the ball came loose, I think they're going to call Jeff Knox down before the ball came loose. So that's going to result in six more points going up on the scoreboard in favor of the Vulcans. Uh, nice no huddle there. And that's going to, like I said, you take a look at the replay. The ball crosses the plane right there, and he'll be brought down. So good job by Knox getting the ball across the plane and getting his six points on the board. Absolutely. Striking early in the fourth quarter. It's 20 to nothing. Cody Nuzo trying to make it 21 nothing. Nuzo puts it up, and it is good. So the Vulcans now have a 21 nothing lead. When we come back, more fourth quarter action here on CUTV. With 18 institutions, my conference is the largest league across all NCAA classifications. With nearly 7,000 student athletes competing in 23 championships, my conference sponsors the most championships in Division II. With a 78% academic success rate, my conference graduates student athletes well above the national average. We compete with passion. We take pride in our efforts in the arena and in the classroom. The Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Passion, pride, Pennsylvania. You're watching CUTV, California University Television. Welcome back to California against Clarion. California with a three touchdown lead now as the band member for the Vulcans is banging the hammer on the uh, steel for every point that the Vulcans score. Uh, Cody Nuzo about ready to kick the ball off away to Clarion. Some quick uh, hits of the uh, sledgehammer on the I-beam there. A uh, little out of sync, but nonetheless, uh, it's always good to see the more pounds, the better. Yeah, and uh, touchback is taken by Clarion. We're going to look at the big fourth down conversion that led to the uh, touchdown later in the drive. Absolutely. You see the pass there. Uh, Harris got rocked in the backfield. It's good to see that he was able to get up on that play and Williams able to hold on to it and that would set up uh, Jeff Knox to get it into the end zone. A nice run before and then a nice run there to seal the deal on a second effort to cross the ball over the goal line. And that was the result of putting six more points on the board for the Vulcans. They now lead 21 to nothing. 14-17 left in the last quarter of play here in the fourth quarter. So um, it's gonna be interesting to see how Clar Clarion's offense comes out now. They have to put points on the board. Bobby Thomas with the run. He is met right about the 25-yard line. No gain on the play. He'll bring up second and 10. That was B.J. Stevens, as well as Rodney Guillen and Jawan Bryant combining for the tackle. Yeah, Thomas back in now, uh, questioning to see how long he's back in. But Stevens on the tackle, as you said, able to go ahead and bring him down with the assist of the uh, other player for the Vulcans. Number six is Jawan Bryant. So uh, good tag team there to manage the running game and not allow Clarion to get anything productive going on offense again. Darrell Carson back. He is about to pass. He is almost taken down for a sack. Gets the pass away, but it is well out of bounds and incomplete. The defender for California, if we have a replay for you to view, not sure if we will or not, we'll have to see who almost went for the big sack for California. Well, we'll go ahead and take a look at that replay. Uh, if you ask, you shall receive, Zach. And it looks like number six, uh, Dewan Bryant, again, tries to go after it, but the coverage is tight, and um, Carson's accuracy just not on today at all, uh, throwing out of bounds a lot and not even letting his receivers uh, get to the ball before they go uh, out into the sideline and out of bounds. He is 10 for 20 on the day, Tyler, for only 60 yards. The longest pass he's had completed is for 10 yards, so not a lot working down the field for him. As we have the snap, he is going, he is to, going to be sacked. Although I don't know, believe if that's actually going to be listed as a sack because it looked like he was going to start rushing the ball, so that might be just a loss on the play. Looks like Noah Taylor part of that uh, coverage. 
Yeah, Noah Tennant's got to be careful getting up there like that. Anthony McPoyle, uh, McPoyle pulling pretty hard on that arm. That's how you tear biceps. You really got to watch yourself. But nonetheless, good job by the uh, Vulcan defensive line there and the rest of the Vulcan defense to swallow up the uh, play there and just put it to an end. It's going to be fourth and 14 now, so Clarence going to be forced to punt again. And it has been listed as an official sack being credited to B.J. Stevens and Jalen Fields, so they will share the sack on that one. And the punt, the punt is blocked, Tyler, and recovered by the Vulcans, or no. We'll have to see who gets it. California does recover the ball about the 29-yard line. Looks like number 81, Gary Brown, on the recovery. We'll take a look at the replay here. A nice block. We'll have to see who it was officially that came up with that one. But Gary Brown recognizing where the ball was at. Good job by him. And uh, coming up with the ball, almost doesn't hold on to it, but able to cradle it once again before Clarion was able to make any difference in that play. So good job by Gary Brown. Uh, having a big impact on the team this so far this year, being suspended for one game. But, man, when he's out there, he does do quite the job of uh, making a name for himself. Absolutely, Tyler. And this sets up the Vulcans with very good field position. Pitch play to Fiori trying to get outside. He's going to have a tough time trying to get any yards though. And actually, he might gain about a yard. But no, he will actually be taken out for a loss of one on the play. So not able to get back to the original line. Yeah, take a look at the replay here. Fiori, uh, the line there, especially number 70 for the Vulcans, uh, I believe it's Jeremy Seaman, not able to uh, keep his block intact. So that would cause a lot of disruption in the backfield. So good job by Clarence defense. Uh, definitely executing through that line and holding Fiore to a loss. Now Harris in shotgun looking to pass. Has a receiver and it's complete to Mike Williams. He has it at the 20, 15, 10. Taken out about the eight yard line. Or excuse me, Tyler, it's actually number 88. We've I don't believe I've ever actually called that number all year. Samir McDowell, he is the third tight end listed on the roster behind uh, number one, Desmond Green, and Paul Butler, number two. So he's getting some time now uh, late in this game. As, as we said, the Vulcans up 21-0. Um, not feeling too, too threatened by that clarion offense. So they're going to maybe bring in some backups to get some time as well. Now, uh, an end around. Trey Johnson, this time he fumbles the ball, though, and is recovered by Clarion. So reverse play does not work this time, and they give the ball right back to Clarion at about the 20-yard line. The Golden Eagles will take over after the fumbled reverse. Andrew Fraggle disrupting that play. As you see him come off the line, Johnson not able to hold on to the ball completely. Uh, he might have been looking to throw the ball, actually, but Fraggle jumping on top of that one, and when a de defensive lineman can get control of a ball on a fumble recovery. Man, it's like the happiest day of his life, you know, Zach? I mean, I was a former defensive lineman back in my playing days, and anytime you get to put your hands on the ball, kind of gave you a little glory and spotlight, and uh, I'm sure Fraggle's feeling the same thing right now. All right, now Darrell Carson out for the first and 10 play from the 20. He will look to pass. Pass. Intercepted by California. That is Aaron Terry on the interception, Tyler. That was in a very, very impressive interception, Zach. Uh, I hope that we have a replay on that one because you guys need to see it to believe it again. There you see Carson drop back and roll out to his right, pressured, and you see what looked like a blown dead play. Terry comes up with it, though. A great reception for Terry and a great interception overall. And that's gonna put the Vulcans back in a very good field position. Uh, ball located on the 23 yard line. So Harrison Company gonna look to put more points up on the board again. This time hopefully they'll be able to hold on in the ball for their own six. Claren looking for another turnover. Fiore hand up up the middle, about the 20 yard line. So a gain of three. That'll bring up second down and seven, Tyler. Yeah, now that uh, that turnover takes place, Zach, you, you might see, uh, as we said before, more um, second and third string players getting in. As we said earlier, you saw number 88 on the reception before for, um, for, the, for the Vulcans, Zamir McDowell. So you might see some more of so more type of players like that coming in, third string tight ends and uh, third string, second string wide receivers, Gary Brown being one of them. Um, so good win, also another noticeable wide receiver out there. So you might see those kind of players coming in. Hand off again to Fiore. He's at the 11 yard line. Taken down for a new set of downs. Absolutely, Fiore trying to get something going there as he breaks through the line. 
And uh, just almost very close to finding open green and getting into that red end zone that says California in it, uh, just brought down by those Clarion defensive backs. So good job by Fiore executing pretty well on offense right now. Fake handoff to Fiore. Harris going to keep up, but he will be sacked back around the 20 yard line. Marked at the 22, so a loss of 11 on the play. That's going to really hurt the Vulcans in this drive. They're still in field goal range. It'll be second and 21. Yeah, Clarion's defense not fold on that fake, on that fake rather, not at all. And that's uh, Jacob Heinz on the sack. So that'll be Harris's second sack of the day, the second time he's been brought down in the backfield like that. So that's going to be a uh, second and 21 now for the Vulcans. Harris, three receivers, twins right. Lone receiver to his left, fake handoff, or excuse me, no, Fiore does have it. He's taken down at the 20-yard line, a gain of two on the play. will bring up third and 19. Yeah, it's going to be third and 19 now for the Vulcans, as you said, Zach Fiore, uh, the predominant running back in this series right now. It's going to give him some time to develop. He is still fairly young, a sophomore running back, so he's got some t more time to uh, try to, you know, develop a little bit as a running back and so he gets some more experience and develops more so he's more effective his junior and senior years. Third and a long 19 from the 20-yard line. Still in field goal range for Cody Nuzo, however. So the Vulcans don't necessarily have to get the end zone to get some points on the board. Harris back to pass. Has two receivers over the middle. It looks like Kawan Scott as well as maybe Nadir Brown actually. The first time we called his name all day. Or no, excuse me, that's Desmond Green, not Nadir Brown. Yeah, and a dear, uh, Desmond Green, rather, the intended receiver on the play, uh, just not able to come up with it. Uh, Kawan Scott was in the range of that one. I believe it was number 15. Uh, you were saying the Deer Brown. I'm not exactly sure. I think it was Kawan Scott, though. But that's going to bring out Cody Nuzo in this field goal team. We'll see what uh, the leg of Cody Nuzo has in store today. A little bit of right-to-left wind blowing right now. It's a 37-yard field goal up and... It is no good, wide right. So Cody Nuzo not able to put some points on the board. That's his first most field goal in a couple weeks, Tyler. And now we're going to look at CUTV Online, uh, one of the best ways you could possibly watch our programming from football to soccer, basketball when it comes up. We'll even do a little bit of softball as well as our weekly news program and always high school roundup and match play as well. Absolutely. You can go on to cutv.calu.edu where you always do live program streaming as well as go on to our YouTube page, search CUTV Sports 1, and you'll be able to uh, – actually, you can search CUTV Sports 1 or you can just put, type it into the ID bar up on top there and you'll be able to find our programming. We uh, post all of our live – um, newscast. We post all of our football games now, complete games. We can show highlights as well. So a lot of good ways to watch our programming here at CUTV. Now Bobby Thomas with the handoff gains about four yards on the play. BJ, St BJ Stevens on the tackle for the Vulcans. Stevens having himself a pretty good game, Zach. I mean, he's had a lot of tackles so far this game, a couple of them for loss as well. His name has been called a lot, so having a great defensive game for himself, and uh, that's what the Vulcans really need, a big defensive game after letting up two not-so-good games uh, with Westchester and IUP. He actually has nine tackles on the day total. That leads the Vulcans. Deep shot for the Eagles. There's a receiver just out of the reach for the Clarion receiver. That's John Reed. The six foot senior. Yeah, John Reed might have lost that ball in the uh, sunlight there because the sunlight was uh, directly in his eyesight there. So you see the pass, and you see what I mean by the shadows on the field. The sun located to hit, well, actually, right, right behind him where he was looking for the ball. So he might have lost the ball in those sights, but a little bit overthrown as well. So um, again, Carson is struggling to sync up with, with his receivers. A lot of incomplete passes on the day. Now we'll bring up third and six from the 24 for the Golden Eagles. They need to get to the 30-yard line to bring up a new set of downs. They need to get something going with only 8.34 left in the game. It's a pass, deep pass, out of the reach for his receiver. That is number two for Clarion. That is Caleb Mancini. Yeah, Caleb just... Uh not able to get underneath that one the way that Carson had planned. Again, you go back to the a lot of uh, the, the many incomplete passes from Carson this game, and he's not able to break out those big runs that we were talking about earlier in the day that he's capable of doing. His dual threat 
Um, quarterback style is works for him very well, but just not working very well for him uh, so far in this game. And Nathan Conway on for yet another punt. We'll have to look up exactly how many he's had today. As it is a fake punt. But there's a fumble, though. Clarion will recover, but it's still going to be turnover on downs. It's, it's a few yards short of a first down, Tyler. So California will recover the ball. Looks like number 26 for the Vulcans gets the ball back. It's going to be number 86, actually. Kellen McCants, a wide receiver. But you look at the upcoming telecast for CUTV, Zach, October 18th, high school football, Mount Pleasant at Brownsville. Mount Pleasant coming off like a big coming off a big win over Washington uh, just this past Friday. October 19th, the day after Vulcan football at Seton Hill, as Seton Hill is welcome in to the PSAC West this year. High school football, Altoona at Connellsville. Vulcan football versus Gannon. That's going to be a very interesting matchup. And then the following week, November 2nd, against Slippery Rock. So a lot of good games coming up on our telecast. You guys have to watch and see how these games really pan out. Now a handoff to Nick Grissom. He gets his way out to about the 19-yard line, a gain of seven on the play, Yager on the stop for the Golden Eagles. Yager on the stop, um, definitely not Yarmer Yager out there, I, I would have to imagine. Nick Grissom, though, good job breaking up the left side and getting down right around the 19, 18 yard line. Um, running very well this game as well. He's been run very well in every game he's played and he's continuing that this week. Now it'll be second and three from the 19. And off again to Grissom, has some room up the middle. He is in for the score. 19 yards out, and Nick Grissom takes it all the way. 4-6, extends the California lead to 27-0. Absolutely. I mean, Nick Grissom, there's actually a flag on the play, though, Zach. It's against uh, California, so that touchdown run is going to be called back. Let's take a look at what could have been for Nick Grissom. Takes it up the middle. He goes to his left side, and what breaking ankles. Breaking ankles of the Clarion defenders there. It looks like number 34 was the guilty party on that one. The safety, Peter Rivera, not able to compete with Nick Grissom's speed and athleticism. But unfortunately, that yellow laundry coming out on the flag and that penalty for the Vulcans is going to force them back, and that touchdown technically never happened. Yeah, sad to see right there. Nick Grissom does a lot with his playing time. Would have been nice to see him get a touchdown and the opportunities he gets. It will be second and 13 now from the 29, 7.43 left in the fourth quarter. Hand off again to Grissom. This time he rooks right back up the middle, breaks again, breaks again. He's taken down at the seven yard line. So again, a 22 showing again, almost the exact same move from the previous almost touchdown, Tyler. The exact same move, almost the same exact play, Zach, as you watch him break, amp, break the ankles of Rivera again. And uh, number 42, though, not fooled. Uh, Jerome Matthews, he wasn't fooled of Nick, Nick Grissom's move, so he's able to bring him down, but the play is called dead. We'll see what the call is. Uh, there's actually a timeout called by Clarion, so no penalty on the play this time as Clarion trying to buy some time. They're down by three scores. California driving, trying to make a four-score lead. And if you think that happens, then California might be trying to seal this victory away. And now, Tyler, we're going to look at some of the highlights. If you just joined us, this is the uh, first touchdown to Jeff Knox, Jr. Yeah, Jeff Knox able to carry it in on a very short yardage situation. That's usually where he's very comfortable at. Uh, and then you see this pass from James Harris over the shoulder grab by Mike Williams and he takes it in for a beautiful touchdown and that would make the Vulcans go up 14 to nothing and then here is the final play uh, the final score of the game at least for now Harris over the middle he gets drilled on the play and Mike Williams able to come down with the grab and that would set up the uh, another another touchdown run Again, as you see the replay, there's the touchdown run by Jeff Knox, able to carry it himself again. So two touchdowns on the day for Jeff Knox, one for Mike Williams. Uh, coming off of an injury, Zach, Jeff Knox is having himself a pretty good day. Yeah, you have to wonder if Jeff Knox, we've said it a couple times, he's not run like this before already in the season. You have to wonder if maybe he was not letting on so much to his injury earlier in the year, really kind of breaking out today for the Vulcans offense. 
as well as Nick Grissom. Fiore's done some pretty good running. Trey Johnson had a 61-yard run. You have to really give the MVP of this game to the whole running stable as a group because of the production they've had for the Vulcans. That's going to be first and goal from the seven-yard line. 7.24 left in the game. It's going to be a handoff to Grissom. He is going to go right into the end zone for another touchdown. Seven yards out. Makes it 27-0 California. A little bit delayed from Grissom's previous fake touchdown. Yeah, Grissom not getting in the first time, but getting in this time. And, uh, man, he's, he's earned that touchdown, Zach. He's been running great all year, and he finally gets it his way um, and gets it into the end zone. So... Six points on the board now, possibly one more. Uh, depends on what the leg of Cody Nuzo has in store on this extra point. So 721 left on your clock, you see there. Uh, Vulcans pretty much have this one locked up as the kick is up and good. And that makes it 28 nothing. so the Vulcans up by four scores now. 721 left remaining in the fourth quarter. When we come back, more fourth quarter action here on CUTV. We welcome you back as California has a 28-0 lead over the Clarion Golden Eagles with just over seven minutes left. Cody Nuzo ready to kick off and the kick is away. Taken right at the one-yard line by Clarion. A little bit of room to work. Taken down at the 24-yard line. Look like Eric, or excuse me, no, that's not Eric Fry. That's number 39 on the return. But here's the touchdown by Nick Grissom. Yeah, Nick Grissom just... Bobs and weaves through that line and through the clearing defense and gets himself into the end zone. A nice run, not nearly as nice as his almost touchdown uh, before that penalty brought them back, but nonetheless, it still has the same result. That's six points added to the board, and that's a nice uh, touchdown underneath the uh, TD stat on their stat sheets. So Terrell Carson back out to lead the Golden Eagles, trying a miracle comeback. If they have it in their pocket, they need to have it come out now. Back to throw, under some pressure. The throw is incomplete, it was a forward pass, so no fumble on the play, so it'll be second and 10 from the 25. Yeah, that one intended for Bobby Thomas, but again, just not able to sync with his receivers. I mean, he essentially had all day to throw that pass, Zach. He was a little bit pressured, but he could have took a little bit of time to get that ball off to Thomas more clean, but Nonetheless, I mean, the California defense, I mean, they've been playing great all game, Zach. They've really pressured um, Carson a lot, and they've pressured the receivers as well to come up with the ball, and they've played strong all game, and the shutout, I mean, that represents how the defense has really played all game. Carson back to pass, pump fakes, finds the receiver, is complete, but no, the pass is dropped by number 44, Mike Dietrich. Yeah, Dietrich just not able to come up with that one. It went right into his hands and right back out as well. Uh, we'll take a look at the replay. He had his body in front of the ball, Zach. He pump fake to the left, essentially, and goes to the right, finds Dietrich wide open. Dietrich just not able to hold on to that one. He might have heard the footsteps, footsteps of Terrell Roberson. Um, Roberson having himself a very good season as well, Zach. Absolutely. Roberson, I believe, is a junior cornerback for the Vulcans, and he is, so you have to imagine... He's going to get a lot of playing time this year as well as next year when he's a senior. Carson back to pass. He's under a lot of pressure, though. Pass is incomplete. They say he was out of bounds to not get a foot down. That will bring out fourth and ten. That was Mancini, the intended receiver. Yeah, Mancini able to hold on to that one. Zach just not able to keep his feet in bounds when he does. Just a little too far out. Good coverage there again from Roberson as he essentially breaks up that play. And you'll see Trey Johnson there back to receive the punt again from Clarion. That's a very familiar formation we've seen from Clarion for the 
for the most part for all game. I believe this has to be at least the seventh or eighth punt Nathan Conway has had for a clarion, but California's defense has really stifled the clarion offense today, and it's causing him to have a lot more action than I'm sure he wanted. This one is away, and Johnson will receive it at about the 27-yard line. He'll return it from there. Takes it up to 40. He's at midfield. He has some running room to the outside. Tries to break some defenders. He does. 35. Taken down at the 33-yard line. Good return there by Trey Johnson, and we take a look at the upcoming schedule for California. I mean, that's going to be a win for California. Then you go to Seton Hill next week in Greensburg and take on the newly arrived, the new arrival of the Griffins, and then you have another home game at Gannon, and then you got to go to Slippery Rock again, uh, which is going to be a very tough game. You come back to Mercyhurst, uh, and then you play either Millersville or if you get into the PSAC uh, championship game, which is still possible, you have a chance to uh, make something happen there the last game of the year. And Tyler, a development here since it's 28 nothing, a little bit, of, I guess you could call it garbage time. Cody Schroeder is back in for the Vulcans. First time in a couple of games. Schroeder assuming his duties at quarterback yet again for the Vulcans. Pass is complete to the outside. Looks like that was Trey Johnson on the completion for a gain of about eight yards. Yeah, good job by Johnson getting open on that uh, quick little post route to the outside and, you know, stops the clock a little bit. Not that that matters very much at all, but Schroeder able to find a uh, – Schroeder to find a good rider, able to find a good receiver there in Johnson and get some positive yardage out of it. Schroeder in shotgun. Fury looked like he was going to move. He does not. Three receivers on the, on the uh, set. Now hand off to Fiore, he finds some running room, keeps going, and it looks like he'll have enough for the first down. He makes his way out to about the 23, a gain of four on the play. Yeah, good job by Schroeder, getting as much yards as he possibly can out of that one, fighting for every inch, and he gets the first down. So if you're Cody Schroeder, though, Zach, I mean, it's got to be weird being out there again. I mean, your last time you were out there, it was IUP, you threw three interceptions, but overall he has to be very happy to be out there. I mean, this, uh, this is a good chance for him to show himself as a player to the coaches and maybe even try to fight again for that starting role. So good for Schroeder being able to come back out and try to get some positive influence back underneath him. Yeah, Schroeder and Harris are both sophomores as the pass is complete to Jerry Brown, and that is going to be a touchdown. He breaks some defenders, gets in the end zone. Coach. So Cody Schroeder has the touchdown pass there to Jerry Brown. I believe that's his first of the year on the season, at least, Tyler. So Cody Schroeder, assuming his quarterback roles, quarterback role, excuse me, getting the job done, makes it 34 nothing Cal. Yeah, good job by Schroeder. I mean, he's definitely proved himself, he proved himself very well on that drive, Zach, completing both of his pass attempts and uh, keeps some points on the board too. So he's padding his stats a little bit now and getting, a, uh, getting some experience back underneath his belt. And, like I said, you never know what can comp what can happen in the next upcoming weeks. If Schroeder can prove himself, you might see him back in that uh, starting role. And now Cody Nuzo makes the extra point, make it 35 nothing. So with five minutes and 45 seconds left, we'll have the rest of the fourth quarter action here on CU TV when we return. Watch CUTV online anytime, anywhere. Check out your favorite original programs, coverage of the biggest events on campus, and cheer on your Vulcan sports teams. CUTV, log on, tune in now. Visit cutv.calu.edu backslash live. You're watching CUTV, California University Television. And we are back, 35-0, the Vulcans lead. The Golden Eagles of Clarion, Tyler, Cody Schroeder, back in on the last possession, throwing a touchdown pass to Jerry Brown. Into the end zone, had to break a couple defenders, but finds his way maybe 15 yards out for the score. Now Nuzo, kick taken at the five-yard line. Going to be returned 
by Clarion. He is taken down at the 25 yard line. We have a little bit of extra activity at the end, but 20 yards. Well, you take a look at the replay, Zach, and that's Schroeder uh, completing his pass very well to uh, Jerry Brown. And Brown just, um, you know, being that prime meat of that receiving core there, if you will, the baloney of the receiving core. That's at least my favorite sort of meat when I put it onto a sandwich. I like a nice bologna sandwich with some cheese and some mayonnaise and a little bit of lettuce. I mean, that's a great sandwich if you ask me. Absolutely, Tyler. I'm not a bologna fan myself, but... You have to admit, that's one of the better meats up there, and Jerry Brown really proving that. I can always go with a good roast beef sandwich myself. But now, Drell Carson, back to pass. No receiver there. Overthrows everybody. And there's a flag on the play, though, in the backfield, or in the secondary, excuse me. So we might see a holding or a pass interference call on this one. Yeah, I think it might be a defensive holding call. It uh, looks like number 10 uh, might have been the guilty party on that one, uh, Jordan Bauman. We'll see what the referees come up with, though. Um, at least that's what I saw. I saw a nice tug of the jersey. But we'll go ahead and um, see what the referee has come up with. And it's holding on the defense. So that's a 10-yard penalty, an automatic first down for Clarion. But it really won't matter much into the factor of this game. It's already 35-0 California. Five and a half minutes left. It's going to take a couple quick strikes for Clarion to get back into this one. Yeah, Arnell Farmer Jr., the guilty party on that one, not number 10, like I said. I actually had a uh, history of art class with Arnell, a pretty nice guy. I uh, definitely, you know, looked forward to seeing his bright, smiley face every day at class. He uh, could definitely bring some energy to a classroom. Carson, back to pass, under some pressure. He is going to be sacked. No, he's not going to be sacked. He was wrapped up, gets out of it. Now throws the ball away to the sideline. We'll have to see. No intentional grounding penalty on this one, but I believe he was driven too far out of the pocket, but here's the replay, Tyler. Yeah, Carson, good job by at least keeping on his feet, you know, avoiding any sack opportunity. Uh, I mean, he could have very easily been brought down there trying to figure out what to do with the ball and throws it into the hands of a coach on the sideline. So that's going to bring up a second and 10 now for the Golden Eagles. And Carson is not a big guy. He's only 5'10", 195 pounds, but able to evade the defender. His small stature, I'm sure, helps on that one. Pass is complete now to number 83 for the Golden Eagles. Uh, that is Matt Lehman. He is a redshirt freshman for the Eagles. A little bit of Burl pride on this play as Matt Lehman gets open for the reception and goes out of bounds. It's always nice to see that alumni that you get to cover actually get a reception underneath them and uh, make some impact in the game. Now Carson back to pass is a screen pass to number 39 for the Eagles. He has a lot of running room taking on to 39 in Cal territory and Tyler you have to tell us who number 39 is. Johnny Martin is the uh, Recep on the, is on the reception on this play. Nice uh, halfback screen toss there. And uh, just able to take it upfield, get the first down. Uh, again, these are just sophomores and freshmen now coming in and getting some experience and playing time and uh, try to see how they do and get ready and prepare themselves for the upcoming years. Under some more pressure, pass is completed by the Golden Eagles. Still not down. Taken out of the 28, good enough for a first down. That is number two, Caleb Mancini on the completion. So California, they don't want to lose their shutout, but Clarion is driving on them right now with 4.45 left. Yeah, good job by Mancini running, running that wide receiver screen to a tee uh, and getting a good first down out of it. They're really uh, using the screens very well against this second string defense for the most part and executing it very well. Now Carson looks like he's gonna run, passes the ball out of bounds. So it'll be an incomplete pass. Bring up second and 10 from the 28. 426 left. Yeah, and the cheerleader gets to throw a ball into play. That's pretty awesome. Uh, we might have a uh, future quarterback in for the Vulcans, uh, a Vulcan cheerleader coming in to make an impact. But nonetheless, uh, it's always nice to see some other crowd interaction, interaction as the uh, crowd. Oh, there you see. There you see the uh, cheerleaders there. You know, they're enjoying themselves now. They get to celebrate a nice victory. Uh, they were in the parade earlier today as well, so uh, they've had a busy day, and uh, now they get to enjoy themselves as they watch their football team take home what looks like another victory. And now the reception down right at the first down marker. I believe they'll give him enough for a first. That was 39, Jonathan Martin, but he is down. It looks like he is hurt on the play, Tyler. 
Yeah, we'll and take a look at the replay to see what happened, Zach. As, uh, sorry to interrupt you again. Uh, it looks like he might have just went knee to knee with somebody, uh, but it could be worse than that. Hopefully that's not the case um, as he's getting some medical attention now on the, so on the field and uh, some of the Vulcan coaches looking ahead uh, at their players and trying to coach them, trying to get prepared for the rest of the fourth quarter coming up. 417 left. And again, the score is 35 nothing. Ball's located on the 18 yard line. So, as I was saying, though, the crowd interaction for this week has been uh, fairly big, especially for the university. Now the crowd's starting to thin out. Now that the Vulcans pretty much have sealed this one, uh, they're going back to their dorm rooms or their houses or apartments. And they're going to relax for a little bit and maybe uh, partake in some celebrations uh, later in the evening, you know, go get some dinner kind of refuel a little bit and then go have yourself an enjoyable homecoming so it's always a nice week here um i'm sure at any college for homecoming weekend absolutely and i believe correct me if i'm wrong tyler that there's a Bryn marie concert tonight as well so a couple students might be going to that i know she's a former cal u student making it big in country music right now she just released a single she will be having a free concert tonight at california yeah, uh, the Nashville recording artist. It's always good to see some local talent make it big, and uh, she's not as big as she would like to be yet. I personally had never heard of her up until um, the point of that concert being made. And, you know, if I wasn't going home this weekend, I'd probably go check it out and see how she is. I'm sure her stuff on YouTube is very good. I might have to check it out for myself as well. Uh, you know, I'm always interested in those country female female artists you got taylor swift you got uh miranda lambert you got carrie underwood so uh i mean i like jamming out to some taylor swift here and there now pass is complete about the 15 yard line taken out at the 11 that was lehman your old buddy from burrow high school on the reception yeah the former buccaneer making me proud right now zach making me proud uh he gets a nice reception here and he goes out of bounds uh, not enough for the first down, but nonetheless, it's, nonetheless, it's going to bring up a second and short here. So it looks like it's going to be second and third. Darrell Carson back to pass, evading the pocket, still evading the pocket. Pass incomplete. Lehman, the intended receiver on the play, just thrown out of bounds. Will bring up third and three from the 11-yard line. So if they get this first down conversion, it looks like they'll be in first and goal situation with 3:45 left. Yeah, I said second and third. It's actually second and three. Now it's third and three, so now I'm getting things right. Uh, but nonetheless, Lehman, the intended receiver on that one. Carson had to figure out a way. Uh, Carson had to figure out a way to get the ball off, and he did there. Now the run up the middle just at the first down marker. Looks like they'll give him enough, but Tyler, second and third. It looks like you were trouble when we walked in here thinking too much about Taylor Swift, maybe a little bit, but... Nonetheless, it's going to be a uh, good night for the Vulcans. They're going to come away with a 35-0 victory. Well, as it stands, Clarion is actually driving on them, though. And there's still a lot of time left. Looks like Clarion might actually score on this one here. Yeah, they might. It all depends if they can control the ball, and we'll figure out here in the next couple plays. Pass is completed to the one-yard line. He is taken down. That is number 22. Chris Liberto, we've called his name a lot today. He's actually the third string running back behind Travis Day. We've not seen Day today. Day to Day. That's a hard sentence to say, but Liberto on the uh, completion. Well, you may just say it correctly with Day is his last name because uh, a lot of rhymes in that one. But nonetheless, it looks like that ball is going to be taken in for a touchdown for Clarion. Yeah, Clarion is on the board, Tyler. So that's a good moral situation to get some points on the board. Darrell Carson. And his offense have had some struggles all day. They have over 100 passing yards now. They have about 110 rushing yards on the game now. So Cal's defense was really stifling them today. It's good to see for the Golden Eagles they can still get some points on the board. This would have been their first game that they were shut out in all season. Now they don't have to say that with 249 left. Barring the extra point, they'll be down by three or four scores, excuse me. And the extra point is good, so we will go to a quick break. And when we come back, I'm sure we'll have the end of the game. And it's 35-7 California here on CTV. Think you found every hazard out here today? Think again. The spot you missed could be a killer. That spot on your skin could be skin cancer. 
If you're a man over 50, you're in a group most likely to develop skin cancer, including melanoma, the kind that kills one person every hour. That's why your best shot is to check for a spot. It's easy. Follow through and check your skin. Go to spotskincancer.org to find out how. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. You are watching CUTV, California University Television. And we are back after the Clarion touchdown, making it 35-7. to seven. Uh, Looks like number 19, Phil Esposito, a freshman kicker, will kick it away for Clarion. This is only the second kickoff that Clarion will have had today, including the second half opening kick as well. So California, their return unit is not having to work a lot today. Esposito's kick is away. And two new returners back there. Looks like Jerry Brown, though, returning this one, taken down about the 24-yard line. So going to be a uh, moderate return, nothing big on this one. Yeah, good job by him. Just, you know, trying to make, make of it what he could, Jerry Brown, as he takes it up to about the 25-yard line. That's where you would take the ball on a uh, touchback call anyway. So uh, just getting some extra time back there, trying the Vulcans trying to look into the future, trying to see what will work and what won't the work. Uh, so 2.44 left. Vulcans Zach, it's been a pretty awesome game, uh, even on both ends of the ball, even though the scoreboard for Clarion really doesn't show it. Their defense played fairly well up to about midway through the third quarter, and then it just kind of fell apart for them and uh, kind of got lost in frustration. And I mean, that'll happen to any good football team, but it's been a great game. Now a run up the middle, looked like it might have been Nick Grissom. Looks like a gain of about three yards. Or excuse me, no. Grissom takes no, it was uh, Nick Grissom on the run. Cody Schroeder still in there, quarterback. But Tyler, like you mentioned, this is a 14-0 game going into the fourth quarter. California really opening up the offense here late, scoring three touchdowns in this quarter. If that didn't happen, Clarion could have kept this a lot closer. It would have only been a 14-7 game. Things would have been a lot different. Yeah, Clarion's defense was bending, but they just weren't breaking up until, like you said, the fourth quarter, and then it just kind of piled on for them. And overall, I mean, a good standout effort for Clarion as the ball's taken upfield now to the 30-yard line, even past that, the 34-yard line by Nick Grissom, the ball carrier again. But Clarion's defense, I mean, it proved to be very well. It's just their offense wasn't able to uh, respond at all. Uh, Carson really struggled today. Uh, Bobby Thomas had a pretty decent day in the backfield, except he had to split some time with some other uh, backs. So overall, the biggest problem was just the clarion offense uh, not pulling through for them. And uh, Cal's defense really, I mean, you have to credit them for a lot too. They played very strong. B.J. Stevens with uh, about nine tackles on the day, able to hold that uh, clarion offense to only seven points. It's gonna be a third down and two. Run to Grissom, and he looks like he will get the first down, so Tyler, that will seal the deal for the Vulcans. There's a minute and 11 left, but they'll probably Grissom run out the clock. A new set of downs, Grissom, and Michael the rest of the running backs really today, my MVP, in your opinion, who is the standout performer in today's game? The standout performer in today's game, I mean, that could go either way, Zach. I mean, you could look at uh, Mike Williams, how well he did. Trey Johnson being there whenever you needed him big. But, I mean, look at defense. I mean, again, B.J. Stevens leading the team with tackles today. He was your probably your defensive standout on offense. I might have to give it to uh, Jeff Knox, honestly. He had a very good game rushing-wise, got two touchdowns, and... Uh, performed at his best level today. Absolutely, Tyler, and that was the best we've seen him all season. He might have been hurt earlier in the year, not just letting on to that, not performing. Like we know, the Fort can, and that will be the last play of the game, Tyler. So there's still 25 seconds left on the clock, though. California getting a big victory. They'll move to 2-1 and one in the West, 4-2 and two overall. And California is going to walk out of here with a 35-7 victory. Absolutely, you hear the band in the background now playing, celebrating that big win for the Vulcans, and uh, that's going to seal the deal here for our Addison Stadium. Absolutely. For Tyler Harris, I'm Zach Lamar. For all of our crew back in the truck and on our cameras, thank you for watching here on CUTV, California 
with the victory, 35 to seven.